Hello and welcome this evening to Critical Role, everyone. A uh, show where a bunch of us nerdy ass voice actors play Dungeons and Dragons and have a good time. Um, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and. <laughs> oh, I forgot to do the format this time. We'll start with the intro. We're going to try and do that going forward because it makes more sense. But for now, let's go ahead and jump to the intro and we'll be right back to describe what we have going on. Welcome back. Uh, so we uh, first and foremost, we got a couple quick announcements to get into uh, for this week. Uh, every, every hundred subs we get to the channel this evening, we'll be doing giveaways. The giveaways this week will include a signed photo of the cast of Critical Role, as well as the first time offering a large print poster of one of the classic moments within our campaign, drawn by our illustrious Kit Bus, our official oh, yes. artist for Critical Role. Um, I think Zach should be showing you that photo symbol. We'll be giving away a really nice, high quality print of that signed by the cast and be sending, sending that out to uh, whoever wins the, the wonderful uh, prize for the chat room. So every hundred subs, I think we're 50 away from our first giveaway. So uh, see if you guys can get that climb in, we'll be giving out those shortly. Um, also, as we've previously, the past two weeks, had some great guests joining our first half of the Vox Machina group on their adventure. Uh, this week we have two new guests joining us for this and next week. Well, I'm going to have a big warm welcome to our players this week, Will Wheaton and Will Friedel. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Excited to have you. So awesome. Slightly nervous. So cool. You're going to be great. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. I want to apologize in advance to Liam for having to share a table with me. I'm sorry for what's going to happen to your dice on account of how close oh. we are to each other tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my body, but you're going to infect. I just, I hope you're not too attached to anything with your character at all. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay, that's just, I'm just telling you, if there's dice you really love, you might want to put them away. <laughs> put his keister this one. There you go, good <laughs> idea. <laughs> most, most comfortable way to do that. <coughs> well, awesome, guys. Thank you so much for, for, for joining us on this. Um, before we jump in... Let's see if we have any announcements anyone wants to make. Anything coming up? Anything you want to talk about? I'll start. I'll yeah. say that yeah, you go um, first. as of as of flying out this evening, I should say, uh, a flight at twelve fifteen from LAX. We're flying out to Columbus, Ohio, for MatsuriCon this weekend. That's so, any of you guys out there in the Ohio area want to come visit me for the weekend? I'll be doing signings, panels, and generally hanging out with uh, fans and stuff. So, uh, if you're in that vicinity, you should come say hi. Nice. Yes. That's uh, that's my announcement. Cool. Anyone else have anything to um, learn? Yeah, I, uh, I recently uh, started my own uh, Twitch stream, so you can uh, follow me and watch my... I play a lot of video games, guys. It's a horrible addiction. That's amazing. Um, but it's at Orion Akaba on Twitch. So you, you, keep, you keep streaming Thursdays at 7, which I think is really counterproductive. You know, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> I, I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually being in two places at once. It's silly not to take advantage yeah. of it. I'm actually, I am, <laughs> I, I am, I, um, I am actually hosting Geek Energy on my channel right now. Oh, so look at you! I'm over here. Simultaneously brewing at home right now. I am. Yeah. Um, and I am also running this game in an alternate universe. Oh, wow! That's amazing. It's pretty great. Yeah. It's, I'm the, and Matt rolled so bad in that game. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. Um, I am. I'm uh, having dinner with my wife tomorrow. That's wonderful. Wow. That's awesome. That's nice. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. We're probably going to put a, a whole chicken in the smoker in the afternoon. Wow. And uh, and then I think we're going to play some games. Um, I'm introducing her to a game that I got at Gen Con called Lanterns. Mm. Lanterns. Cool. Yeah. Really fun. Don likes game. Really like it a lot. Nice. Cool. Awesome. Check that out. I, uh, after four lovely years, popped the question last week. Yes, you did. And I'm engaged to be married. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's awesome. Thank you very much. I would say Susan's a very lucky girl, but 
No, I'm the lucky one. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I lucked out. I really was the one who lucked out. So needed to straighten out. Does she know, or is this the proposal? I <laughs> was going to propose like this, but we live in the woods, and we don't get this show there. So <laughs> we have no internet whatsoever. No. She knows. She knows. She stupidly said yes. So we'll see what happens next. If you need an, an entree into the society of men who married way above their stations, I can provide you an introduction. Thank you. <laughs> I've been a member for 16 years. That's awesome. Yes, I do. That is absolutely what happened. Here, so there are jackets. I will need that. Yeah. They're nice. Yeah, yeah they're members only jackets. Members only jackets. <laughs> nice. That's the way all went. Just a little too short on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, we just, so we always so we remember. That's perfect. I like that. Nice. What a Swede. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a nylon hood zipped into the neck for yeah. some reason. Which you know. no one ever uses. Yeah. And you forget it's there and so you're like, what's that? Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. So you were the first to know that that's happened. Yeah. Yeah. Exclusive. 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 Yeah. Exclusive. Exclusive. <laughs> um, well, fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into where we left off. Oh, cool. I just thought I heard you say you need a pencil. I know, I do. I have pencils. Yeah, happens when you're in multiple places yes, at once. Sometimes pencil. your reality <laughs> start blending. There's a, I'll share if you'd like. Thank you. There nice. you go. Anyone else need a pencil? Be good. That was a good throw and catch. We're good. I have a mechanical pencil that looks like a pencil pencil. Oh, that's really kind of great. Right? Sports. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think I have the same kind of one. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice. We, do, nice. we do the hand-eye coordination thing. All righty, guys. So, as it currently stands, Vox Machina, throughout its adventures, found itself in the city of Vasselheim as of late. Uh, they came to seal away the Horn of Orcus they had tore from the head of the Beholder, Kavarn, deep in the Underdark. Once they'd completed this journey, uh, they spent some time in the city just trying to figure out kind of what can be done there, preparation for possibly uh, Keyleth making a venture out to one of her Shari tribes, um, during which Grog entered a fight ring and lost, and uh, the party decided to go ahead and, and... Never forget. I know. Uh, I have a feeling Kern and Grog are going to have a round two in the near future, depending on how Grog's feeling about that. Um, then the party saw that there was some sort of a hydra-like being that had been harrying the walls at the outskirts of the city of Vasselheim. Uh, being the adventurers they are, they took it upon themselves to leap out into the jungles and, and the forests of the Vesper Timberland, found and hunt down, hunted down this uh, hydra, fought it, and upon slaying it, discovered that there was another group also hunting this hydra, an actually sanctioned group, and that hunting this hydra is considered illegal in Vasselheim unless you had actually been contracted to do so. Whoops. So in breaking the laws of Vasselheim, they could have been uh, tried for it, but instead chose to return to the city with this group of hunters and be brought before their guildmaster, uh, the huntmaster, uh, known as uh, Huntmaster Vanessa Sindriel. Basically, they were given the choice. They could go to trial, or they could undergo their own personal trial to join the guild, the Slayer's Take, which is essentially a guild that uh, takes on contracts to hunt various requested creatures down, harvest elements of their physical bodies to then be sold uh, or return to these individuals and be paid for it. If they manage to complete these trials, they will be absolved of breaking the law because they will now be within the confines of it and will be members of the guild. So choosing that, they were then also notified that they would be splitting up into two different groups, uh, much to the chagrin of Vex and Vax, our twins. <laughs> um, split apart, <laughs> split apart. Separation anxiety is a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> So this, uh, this group, uh, the second adventuring group, has gathered itself back to the Bellows Respite Inn. Uh, Vax, you were asked to go to the bar to join your sister Vex for a shot of the hardest liquor they had available to deal with the coming separation. You shared a brief breakfast, shared your bitter, spiteful, alcoholic imbibement, and then went your separate ways. The first group went initially, and it's been about an hour or so of you guys waiting in the tavern for them to, as far as you know, take care of their business before you're to go to the guild yourself. So we have Tiberius, Keyleth, and uh, Vax all sitting around the Bellows Respite Tavern, lamenting what's going to come next. Oh, cheer up, Vax. You'll be back soon. Yeah. I've never seen you quite so down. I've been separated from my parents for like a really long time. You get used to it. It's not too bad. Yeah, not that's not me. It took you bad. years to do that. Yeah. About two minutes in, so I'm gonna grieve a little bit longer. Uh, don't say the word grieve. That's that's strong. Yes, it's implying that someone has died, and yes. no one has. So 
you know. It's only a few days. It'll be good. Separation makes the heart grow fonder and all that stuff. It's fine. I just have a low tolerance for bullshit, and I'd like to get past this uh, little piece of shit that we're being made to swallow. I agree. Stormwind should not be meddling around with these peasants. Uh, I'm going to have a... Are we in a tavern? You are currently in the Bella's Restaurant. Hey, Bucky, bring me uh, your finest ale for my friend here, and uh, for, for the lady. <clears throat> uh, the, I'll take a water. The, uh, the relatively jovial, kind of ginger-bearded, rotund human gentleman who runs the establishment uh, comes over to you. Looks like himself is a little bleary-eyed and hasn't quite adjusted to the morning light itself. Oh, okay, certainly. I'll go ahead and retrieve that for you. It's three. Three is what I'm looking at. Yes. What, what time is it? Uh, right now, I'd say it's roughly nine, ten in the morning. Ho, ho, ho. Sure, let's start early. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <clears throat> and I flip him, whatever, a couple of coins. He ca- tries to catch it, fumbles, goes yes, and awkwardly picks it up and then d- wanders. Don't throw it, that's rude. I give him a tip. J- <sighs> Five minutes go by, your food and drink are brought to your table, and you continue to lament about <laughs> the coming time. Uh, is there anything else you guys wish to uh, take care of before you make your way to the Slayer's Take Guildhall? Well, we should, um, since we're getting separated, Grog is taking the bag of holding. I have one, don't forget that. Right, but we had a lot of stuff in that bag of holding. I mean, I kept oh, most of the right. stuff that I needed on me. Um, but how many how many healing potions do we have? Not a lot, that's what I'm concerned about. We've lost our meat shield and we don't have pike, so I think we probably need to go and get some... Uh, I mean, I, I can I mean, go ahead and brush up on healing spells as well. Make sure that I come a little bit more real, well equipped, just in case. I mean, I'm good on potions, but uh, yes, we should restock our supply. How many you got? Uh, I have uh, uh, two, uh, three potion of greater healings and uh, three regular potion of healings. Can I have one? I mean, I suppose if we're just gonna go buy more, it doesn't matter. But here, just in case something happens along the way. Thank you. I only have one uh, greater healing potion right now. Yes. So we'll go buy more, and then <clears> we'll see what else they have. Um, I would like to see if we could procure a couple of items, like a, of, uh, a couple of uh, empty files, because I've used a lot of mine. Uh, maybe uh, find some acid or whatnot uh, at these item shops. So let's look around and get the stuff. Can we okay. Do that? Okay. Uh, go ahead and make an investigate check. Oh, apparently we have the flying carpet? Uh, we 16. Flying carpet? Do we have the flying carpet? Uh, the flying carpet is, for the most part, uh, kept wrapped up and uh, in the within bag of Grog's bag of holdings, I thought. Because I just, oh, I think, so I, Grog was checking out, he was breaking up a little bit, but I feel like he just told me that we took the flying carpet. Oh, oh we took the flying carpet. Just, we what, uh, sorry. I, oh. He's, he's very he's far away, sorry. but I feel... It's, Reaching its limits, but uh, I would like to bogart the flying carpet and everything in the fucking bag. He uh, apparently left us with the flying carpet. No, he, no. this according to no, he's saying he left with the flying carpet, Keyleth. He left with it. We don't have it. He said, "Remember, you took the flying carpet to break our pee for a second. Am I texting you that right now? Yeah, I. You know that mm, I can't. You're cutting out. You're yeah. cutting out Grog. I held it for a time, but I only have my Wheel of Mending in mind, as far as I know. Well, if indeed... Hold on, let me check. As you reach into your bag of holding... <laughs> I'm thinking really hard. <laughs> through the lock of the draw, it seems to be that the last resting place of the, ba- of the flying carpet was within your bag of holding. Oh, 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 oh. oh here it is. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, we have it. Now. Shut my mouth. I guess Found I was it. wrong. We're good. All right, let's We're go to the good. let's go to the store. I don't really want to yes. drag this out any longer than we have to, and I just Tiberius. walk out the door and start going. Okay. Which one for your investigate Jeez. check, by the way, Tiberius? Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. As you guys take the next twenty or so minutes wandering uh, the Quad Rogues district of Vasselheim, asking around, a lot of the shops here offer general supplies. Uh, there are a few that are focused more on the mining supplies, as there is a rather large market for mining cobalt out of the center of the mountain the city is built around. Um, you find places that provide you know, clockwork for uh, you know, large grandfather clocks that are now starting to be distributed between this part of the city. You also find that there is a rather large, bizarre type market in the center of the quad roads that you passed by when you first came through the town. Um, 
amongst many of these barkers, you do catch one small tent, Tiberius, uh, that catches your eye because it resembles the same purple color as one tent you guys had entered in Iman about a year or so ago, which you encountered a fortune teller. <gasps> oh, shit! It's the witch's fortune. What are you looking for? Wait, this happens! Look at those fingers fly. I approach. <laughs> Do you know her name? Remember her name? I can probably find it. Uh, I would take a minute of digging, though. I'm approaching. Uh, hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on. It's gonna have to go back. I gotta go back to my old notes. I gotta go back to my old D and D notes. Keep, keep doing stuff. So, as you enter the tent, uh, the, the tent itself, you kind of pull the curtains apart, and there's one other individual who seems to be just perusing the interior. But the smell that hits you immediately is uh, a very, very heavy uh, kind of sage. A, c- a ceremonial burning of various spices to kind of give the air a, a mystical scent. Um, the light itself is very low. There's a few flickering candles, and it looks like a hooded lantern in the far corner that's kind of directed outward to give a bit of an ambiance to the interior of the tent. Um, a series of uh, small ropes and cords made of what looks like hemp and silk carry trinkets and, and bones and various uh, what looks to be en- enchanted. Just stop. Um, uh, various other accoutrements, and in the far back corner amongst this table, there is indeed a very beautiful elven woman dressed in a fine uh, silk gown with a metallic headband, her kind of dirty blonde hair put behind her ears, and she looks to be in the middle of just shuffling a deck of tarot cards. As you enter, she looks up and gives you a look of surprise, and then a curious look of remembrance. Am I with him? Uh, you're behind oh, him outside yeah, of the yeah. tent. He just entered. If you guys want to go in with yes. him, yes, yes. All right, right, you enter and are greeted by this same uh, atmosphere. <gasps> Trista. She kind of gives you a, a, a cross look and. It's been so long. Ah, I knew. Yes. Fancy meeting you here. She she look, puts her finger up for a second, turns over to the, uh, the looks like a noble woman who's currently perusing a small shelf of books and tomes and says. I'm terribly sorry. Would you mind just uh, giving us a moment of some personal business to attend to? And the, the woman's like, "But fine, I didn't want to purchase anything anyway," and stomps out of the tent. The the door closes behind her. At which point, the other woman immediately turns. Trista's my sister. <gasps> You're Parsethia. It's good to see you again, young half of. And Hi. you see now with the uh, the current atmosphere. The, the light seems to dim in the interior of the tent, and the elven woman's uh, visage shimmers and then fades, and they're sitting behind the table. You see a large, hunched forward, gnarled humanoid, this woman who is definitively referred to as a hag and or a uh, uh, thane-based hag, is currently lording over the table, long, twisted fingers holding that same deck of cards, looking up at you with the crooked nose and the, the pointed chin, has a grin on her face, looks to you and uh, it has been some time, Dragonborn. I can still see there is but a fraction of you still missing. Yes, I still don't know what that means, but I am actually happy to see you, my lady. Still still shuffling your cards. So, is there anything I can help you with? Yes, yes there is. You mentioned before what I asked you last of the Boros ring. You revealed that it was in the Fey, the Wild Fen. I am also in search of an item that I did not get to ask you about called the Pale Stone. And I would wish to know the location of that as well. That gives you a keen look. I think for the time being, one quest is enough. Mm. Return when you've procured this ring you so graciously seek. Then perhaps the rest of this will be revealed. Grow greedy with fate, and I fear the timeline will swallow you up, your dragon blood. Fair enough. Pulls a card, sets it down, and just starts going over her own reading. With each card, she slams down with a heavy thud. The room itself seems to almost cloud, the air growing thicker, and there's a, a hint of, of, how do I put it, 
frustration that she's currently being bothered and strung out, and after she takes a few moments to herself, she looks back to you. Is there a business you seek aside from asking me these questions? Perhaps a bubble or two. I make fine bubbles. Since you're not in the business of information, then we are in the business of procuring uh, specific items. Uh, potions, uh, I'm looking for a few empty uh, glass files, uh, perhaps some acid if you have it. She stands up, and as she stands up, you can now see the, um, the hag, which hunched forward, sits at a solid five feet tall at full height, even with the hunch. She's now cresting the top of the tent at about <coughs> seven feet. Uh, long, stringy, gray-black hair kind of framing the shoulders. The, uh, the same nice kind of goldish silk outfit that the elf appearance was wearing is there, yet it looks much more world-tattered and uh, matching <laughs> the one currently wearing it. She reaches behind her, still staring at you intently in the face, and grabs a small case off the wall, sets it down before pulls back the wooden lid, and on the inside you can see there are three small glass vials. These are what I have to offer. Two of them will write the physical force. Perhaps take care of some of those wounds someone as foolish and careless as you would eventually deal with. Hmm. The third one, well, caustic in, it, caustic in its nature. Its application is up to you. They are sold as a set, though. Three hundred gold pieces. Take it or leave. I don't have to be all nasty about it. I mean, I have the money. Um, <clears throat> here you go. She reaches over, and as you hold the small bag of coin out her hand, it completely engulfs yours. The fingers wrap around, and for a second you feel a tug, and you're awkwardly pulled forward a few inches closer to her face. You get, the breath catches your nostrils, the scent of swamp water and old fish. It's it's a moment of, of, of intensity there. You forget your surroundings for a brief moment, and there's just you and this entity, and you really realize she's far older than you ever gave her credit for. She then pulls the bag of coin from your hand and withdraws. The light seems to return from the peripheral of your vision. Keyleth and Vax are there to your sides. She reaches forward and pushes the box forward towards you and the table. Be safe, and may fortune smile upon most of you. Yes, I, I, am, I know something bad is going to happen. I, okay. Well, this what? is all, I showed the, bo the, the box, uh, uh, I take it, pick it up. <coughs> um, this is all she had to offer, uh, and um, she's not taking questions. You're not taking any questions right now? Not today. <clears throat> Not today. As you know, my dealings with fate take a lot out of me. Sure. I'm not quite ready for another round of tellings. You see, the city, as most bits of civilization, are very eager to hear what the future has in store for them. So I'm a bit tapped out at the moment. And you can see a bit of dried blood around one of her nostrils, and if you recall last time, the process was very physically taxing on her. Uh -huh. Perhaps we'll turn in a week or so. And if I'm not here, I'm around. Old one. Are you still willing to trade today? Trade. I'm wondering if you have any poisons beyond the run of the mill nightshades this afternoon or morning. She stands up and reaches over, and there's a small uh, kind of alchemical uh, glassware set up on the side, and you can see some of it's kind of cracked and old, and you've been brutalized over the time being. And she pulls a very, very small vial of some dark black, almost uh, uh, almost umbra-type liquid, where you can't even see shine in the light in the nearby area. It looks like it almost just absorbs all the light. She kind of puts it forward before. This would be very unfortunate to find its way in the bloodstream of an enemy, yes. What do you want for it? A favor. Not now. But perhaps down the road. She does that, thanks, a lot. 
Why not? She pushes forward with her long, long crooked fingernail, shoves the vial forward, it kind of screeches across the top of the table. She withdraws her hand. So it is done. At that moment, there's a very cold shiver down the back of your neck that then fades. And she just kind of grins with this nasty, toothy grin. Now, be on your way. I have cards to shuffle. Yoink. <laughs> It's so nice to see a familiar face in such a strange place. <laughs> She's lovely. Yes. Yes. Uh, good day, madam. As you all step out, uh, she kind of places her hand in front of her, and her form once again shimmers and shifts down to that beautiful elven maiden that greeted you as you entered. The lights tend to blossom a little bit, and you close the tent behind you. As we're leaving, I. That's a good look for you. You <laughs> have <laughs> a slight, breathy <laughs> chuckle. That starts beautiful, and then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, uh, what did I actually get? Uh, all right, so uh, you uh, acquired two uh, potions of greater healing, yeah. oh, cool. uh, and a vial of some sort of caustic liquid. You're uncertain as to what its properties are. Sweet. Caustic liquid. You also don't quite know the properties of yours, but you gather the assurance from a creature of this power. She doesn't. She speaks some riddles, but not in untruths. Mm. Uh, I'm going to give you another one of the greater potions. So, add another. One. Thank you. We're right in the middle of a bazaar. Do we maybe want to? Yeah, we can get more. quick I'm jog just around. Doing, I'm just, I'm just still getting out of this week. I grab someone passing by and say, "You uh, potions? Where? Here?" Uh, the person kind of looks down your arm, brushes it off, and the middle-aged gentleman goes, "Uh, sorry." You do realize that most of the uh, potion trade is controlled by the, the clergy. Oh yeah, so. they're all like no magic and stuff here. I did not know that. Thank you. <laughs> well, shit. It did, wait, did he say it's controlled by the by, clergy? By the clergy, so we have to go there. We should go there for Well, to, well, well, well ju- hang on. Just because it's controlled by the clergy doesn't mean that it's like <coughs> legal. Doesn't mean that if we go knock <coughs> on their door requesting potions, if they're going to take kindly to that. Kind of like getting your concealed deadly weapons license in I have no idea places. what that is. I grab another weirdo passing by and say, excuse me, uh, there's probably a temple around here. Can you point uh, us in the right direction? Uh, the individual kind of looks at you awkwardly and points over, and you can see just past the outskirts of this bazaar, there are a number of buildings that kind of line the outer area of this central portion. You can see where he's pointing, there is a rather large-looking cathedral made of almost a... Uh, from this distance, a warbling, kind of warped obsidian, and it's far more ominous and obelisk-like in its appearance than the other positive temples. In a district of the city you haven't been to yet, but that is the closest temple. Warbling obsidian is my black prose cover band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm getting itchy. Can we just go to the tape, please? I turn and I lean into Tiberius and I say, he's gonna be cranky the entire time we're on this field trip, isn't he? Yes, and usually I'm the cranky one. I know. Um, <clears throat> so let's head to the temple. Right? Nice. Is that what we're doing? I, I guess. Can you turn into a horse? Yes, but that's a little forward, don't you I'm, think? I'm just asking. Uh, do you mean the temple of the take? Where, where do you want to go? Oh, the take? Is that, where, where do you, where do you, what would make you feel good? Oh, let's get on with it, okay. shall we? Sure, fine. Jesus, whoever that is. <laughs> <laughs> that was that, that, that one carpenter we met in, 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 in Vasselheim. Oh, he was sweet, had some good herb. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> that he sure knew how to, it was dank. <laughs> Dank, which is arcane terms for uh, <laughs> thaumaturgical. Anyway, you, uh, you make your way uh, to the, uh, the the southern outskirts of uh, the, this portion of the bazaar, which leads its way into the central uh, kind of building clustered portion of the Quad Roads district uh, to the outside of the Slayer's Take Guild Hall. You walk up to the main doorway, which has the inscription in front, and pushing the door open, you enter to the main uh, kind of foyer area where you see the same. Uh, kind of cast iron uh, chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. The darkwood rafters kind of frame the entire internal area. And there, sitting at the central desk, is once again uh, Merton, 
the kind of uh, scarred up halfling with the rel relatively joyful disposition who looks up from his books and. Okay, it appears to me that at least we have the other half of this venturing group to deal with. <laughs> Let us hope that perhaps you have better luck than your previous friends in what has been chosen for you, huh? Have they already headed out? Yes, they left not more than a, couldn't be more than an hour ago, I imagine. And um, oh, what were they contracted with? Oh no, they're going to kill a dragon. Uh, would you like me to go get the mysteries for you? Excuse me? What? I'll take that as yes. I'll be right back. And he gets up from his table and wanders off. <coughs> Uh, uh, that'll be fine. I'm sure of it. Scan Scanlan makes good decisions all the time. Yes. Uh, as you, um... Oh, hello. As you wait a few moments, eventually uh, Merton returns, but he seems, you know, his head down a little humble, he gestures out with his hands, and you hear the familiar footsteps of the Huntmaster of Nessa Sindriel, her uh, tiefling uh, appearance, both, you know, uh, very striking in her, her chiseled bone structure in her face, uh, her dark leather armor itself creaking slightly with each footstep, and she has that very commanding yet welcoming appearance, which you know hides a very uh, uh, hard to read interior. Uh, she steps forward. Well, are you ready to take on the other half of this mission? Your friends were eager, and they traveled with uh, some of our finer warriors. Are you confident in your capabilities today? Listen, don't be smug with me. None of us want to be here or cooperate with this stupid event just to abide your laws. Tiberius, we could be on the The answer trial. is yes. The answer is yes. Let's get on with it. See, it isn't very simple. I like direct and to the point. I respect. Oh, well, thank you. The angry flowery part in the middle, not so much a fan. Mm. All right, so. She reaches behind and pulls out what looks like a, a small, rolled-up piece of parchment. Looks at it for a second, opens it up. Well, you have one other hopeful for this guild. We'll be joining you for this, and then a leader will be assigned to you on this excursion to keep an eye on you and make sure you stay within the rules and not go absconding to some other country and we have to hunt you down. Fantastic. Mm. Can we use the word liaison? A liaison, if you will. I've learned that in the morning. Uh, Merton, would you gather <coughs> other hopeful for this? Merton goes, <coughs> of course, my lady. He gets up and walks over and knocks on a door. <laughs> As uh, you hear the door knock from the opposite side of the room, opens it up and the kind of uh, red, tussled hair halfling. Uh, Kishaw! Your group has arrived. Now it's about time, I'm sick of waiting. <sighs> He walks out and meets everybody. As you guys look, uh, the door opens and a, uh, a human male uh, steps out into the light, if you wish to describe yourself. Hmm. I am Kasha Vesh. I'm an acolyte. Here I am. I've been waiting for you for so long now. I have to travel with them the entire time? Well, for the remainder of this contract, at least, but once you have joined the guild, perhaps other groups will be assigned to you. I'm, I'm sorry, were we late? I didn't, it, we didn't mean to keep you waiting. Or do you mean like you've been waiting for us for a long time in the like kind of destiny, we're here and we're, we're, where have you been my whole life kind of way? Um, Is she always like this? Yes, it's, <coughs> yes. She's, she's not good person. at reading she's, emotions. She, this is gonna be fun. Yes, no, I meant you're wait, late. Wait, do, is, what I is, that, is that what people say about me? I don't. We'll talk later. Who are you? Uh, Vaxel Dung, Kasha. Yeah. I'm Tiberius Stormwind. And Dragonborn. Mm, yes. <laughs> so what's your thing? What do you do? <sighs> what I do is not really important. What I want to get done, I think, is what matters. What I want to do is start this quest. Is that what you called it, a quest? It is a contract. A contract, a job. Can we just get out there, please, and do what we have to do? Mm. Very well. Nice. I agree. Let's hurry it up, Merkin, shall we? That wasn't it's, your name, was it? It's it's Merton. M Merton is the name, but that that is. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm not from, I'm from these parts. It's, it's, it's my accent. Martin. It's, it's, Martin. It's, it's, Sorry, I could I could hear accent from upbringing. It's, it's, it's Martin. Uh, <coughs> it's singularin. You so. Uh, I said uh, Merton. That's what I said. It's M Martin. M Merton. It, never understand. mind. It's. Um, the, the, by the way, the, the the human that has walked out and approached you, you can see has kind of shoulder length brown hair, a leather cord that is tied around uh, the center of the forehead. Um, Eyes two different colors. One, I believe, is like a light blue. Has a light blue. One is a bright yellow. 
and this right arm all the way up from where you can see where it disappears below the armor is covered in one inch cuts. Scars all the way up. Ah, uh, a religious man. Maybe. Uh, Merton goes over and knocks on another door, opens it up, and uh, this individual is fairly easy to hear from a distance. The heavy footfalls and the grumbling kind of echoes through the hallway before he even appears. Uh, Merton leads you into the light of the main foyer area. Uh, and this will be the group of which you will be guiding on this. I appreciate you doing this for us. I know it's not really usually what you do. But uh, here is your team for this contract. <coughs> I'm sorry, where's the team? This, this is your team. And Vanessa kind of chuckles to herself. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is what you'll be dealing with today. Hi. Hello. I'm Tiberius Stormwind. The Thorbeer. Play nice. What was it? Thorbeer. Thorbeer. Play nice. Thorbeer. So he's a, a, he's a dwarf. He's a really stout dwarf. He's got a really long red beard that's uh, sort of singed off in the lower right corner. He's got... Uh, uh, his his hair is his the the bottom of uh, top part of like his beard is braided and clamped off with all these like ornate kind of things. He's got these big thick ropey white braids that come down on either side of his face and sort of like frame his face. Um, and these have these really big dwarven runes on them. Do any of you guys speak dwarven? Yes. No. So, yes. Okay, all right, so for those of you who speak Dwarven, each, this uh, is a really, really offensive uh, a curse word in Dwarven, um, and this one is an even more offensive curse word in Dwarven. Like, you don't say these in, in friendly sort, sort of company. He's got a scar that kind of runs down across his face, um, and the eye that it runs through is black and his other eye is blue. Um, and uh, you can see that he's got these, like, some kind of dwarven script written in tattoos all the way down uh, his uh, his right arm. Hmm. So please, if you would not mind, making sure that they see their contact to fruition, uh, taking them on this as you will, showing them the ropes of the guild, and try not to get them killed. And for me? Well, you will be rewarded as per the contract. You will be have done the guild a great favor, which you know favors can go a very long way in the guild. I certainly do. You don't have to tell me about repaying favors. Fair enough. Well, perhaps now would be a good time for this jovial lot of adventurers to know what it is they are to hunt down. She reaches behind and pulls out a second. Is it an actual group? Well, we'll see how well you can make it into one. Perhaps this is a test for you as well, Fair Dwarf. I think this is going to be an excellent bonding experience. Seriously, the whole time she's like this? Yes, yes she is. Yes she is. It grows on you though. Mm, I'm sure it, it does. does. So like does the plague. It's positive. It's Why true. Would positive? Everyone has such a problem with optimism. Mm. She unravels it, looks at it. <laughs> I think this will do well for what is required. Uh, we will bind this contract to you now. Feel free to uh, take over. If you wouldn't mind reading, uh, Half Elf. You know, um, I, public speaking is not really my just, strong suit. Just, just, okay, just Okay, okay. Ordered and paid in advance by Anonymous. Oh, they're a fun group. Hmm. This contract, binding in honor and the elements, sets upon the agreed members of the Slayer's Take Guildhall, and the task of locating and slaying the below-mentioned entity, and the recovery of the below-listed harvested anatomy items. <coughs> And any anatomy items not recovered or not in functional condition will be deducted from the final payment and refunded to the client. Oh, that's so, hmm. This contract is good for three days, and should the contract not be fulfilled within that time period, all payments are null and void. This contract is null and void, and membership with the Slayer's Take is revoked. Outside of the Hunter's Master's willful forgiveness. Skip to the punchline. The quarry has been approved for hunting. <clears throat> by the holy paramours of the crown of Erethis, the quarry of one Rakshasa. Rakshasa. What's, what's a Rakshasa? What's a Rakshasa? 
Tiger Man. A tiger Man? Essentially. How do you know oh. that? Storybooks, Singon. <clears throat> do... We need two Raksa, Rakshasa eyes, one Rakshasa tongue, one Rakshasa heart, two Rakshasa claws, and two Rakshasa canine teeth. So canine, can, like. Mm. Would this be an Arcana or would this be a history check? What kind of hit? Uh, this would be more of an Arcana check. <coughs> uh, I'm going to do an Arcana check 18. 18? Yeah. Rakshasas were entities that originally stemmed from the realm of the Nine Hells. They are devils. Um, they are deceptive and usually embed themselves in elements of society where they can grasp and take power. They love having servitude beneath them and they are notoriously difficult and slippery to find, let alone nail down and destroy. They, appearance-wise, they look like a normal humanoid man, but have the face of a tiger, and the other curious uh, element is both of their hands are reversed. Hmm. That's as much as you can glean from your formal training and understanding. Okay. This cat what? have a name? Does that matter? All we know is we can confirm that there is one within the vicinity, or huntable at the very least. The rest Somewhere of this is up to you to find. The quarry is where it's been last located. Give me this. Oh, okay. Yeah, you double check it. You might have. I might have missed something. Why can't we know who the client is? The client has decided that they wish to remain anonymous for this contract. Seems to be bothering you quite much, Kesha. Everything's been bothering me lately. She's not helping. You want to read this? <clears throat> it's, it's 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 going to say the, it's the same thing. I mean, like which part? Give me this. Okay. How far to the quarry? Uh, the, your quarry is the, in the is the creature. You said you found. You said you, you. It was in the vicinity. What are we talking in the vicinity? Are we talking a day's hike. Are we talking an hour from here. What Meaning are we we've been able to confirm that there is one that is within a huntable distance within the three days of the contract. However, part of this trial is to see just how good you are at finding and destroying such creatures. So. That information is for you to find. Unless you do not feel your skills are up to par for the Slayer's take, in which case you're more than welcome to go for the door. A human. No, we're fine. You have no further information. Are there any grumpkins you want us to find? You expect us to go out with no information at all? How do you find think Find a man with a tiger's head? Well, you all seem like a very well-traveled unit. You seem to have done well enough to find and destroy great things you spoke of as you walked into this horse. Prove to me that you are more than just cell sorts. Show to me that you have the intellect, that you have the skill sets, that you have the cleverness to find a creature that does not wish to be found. Is there some things normally go around here? Normally I don't waste my time with the likes of you. Man with a tiger's head gonna stand out, no problem finding him. Let's stand here and talk about this forever. Let's head out and get this over with. This is going to well, be Well, Dwarf, awesome. why don't you do your title and lead, then? And I should warn you, you are walking with a storm wind. Now, you may not know my name, but I can assure you, I alone am an army. So, you are well protected. So lead us to find this Tiger Man, please. Dragonborn, who's a lot of talk. I do talk a lot. Wow. Well, if he's an army, why don't I just send him out? Because I, I don't want to be here. That was probably the ballsiest thing you've ever said. You go do it, yes. I'll wait here. All right. Storm. Wind. Wind. <laughs> you can call me Tipsy. <clears throat> see how good you are at following. And he heads out. He's not very good, good. Oh, he's gone. As the dwarf exits, you guys follow outside of the Slayer's Take into the center of the main Quad Roads thoroughfare on the outskirts of the bazaar to seek a Rakshasa. Wherever one may be. I thought this was going to be a fun field trip. Well, I mean, Rakshasa does sound fun, like Rakshasa. It does. And yeah. it's like a tiger person, so maybe we can relate. I want to switch teams. It's, 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 <laughs> no, it, it, it gets better. <clears throat> I don't understand. Am What's I, your name again? I'm sorry. 
I am Cash on Vash. Call me Brother Cash. Everyone else does. Brother Cash. Brother Cash, are you new to the guild as well? or are you? I'm not a member of the guild yet. I had something happen with someone who did something, and now I'm here. Why don't we leave it at that for now? That's kind of how we got here. Apparently, yes. I only have to be here for another three days, which will be good. All right. <clears throat> uh, it seemed I'm impatient. Perception 20. Okay. Is there anything around that indicates where, which of these four directions is the the best direction to go? Um, knowing the city for the while that you've been here, you know that there are uh, places of open business that have a lot of traffic are also good places to ask for if anyone's seen anything of in, you know of, uh, that might match a certain description or an individual you're seeking. A strange behavior, and so you know that the center of the quad roads where that bazaar is, uh, is a good place to start requesting information, as you have currently none at your disposal. So, and just to get this clear, a Rakshasa is not like a beast, it's like a... It's like a man. Demon. It's a demon. It's a demon? It's a demon creature, it looks like a man. Shape of a man. <coughs> With a... But it's not like a beast, no. by definition. Right. No. Do I'd like I to make... Oh, I'm sorry, I'd like to make an insight check on the dwarf, not just if he's lying, I mean, he could be, but just to, can I get a gut instinct of what his deal is? Go ahead and make an inside check. Three, but I'm gonna use my luck to try that again. 18 plus uh, two is 20. Would you like to just go ahead and roll a 20? That's a two. All Start not. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get that out. Skip that out. Skip. Skip. Just better, better now than the myth, man. Yeah. Um, uh, That's one better than I usually roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say it's twice as good as I. One hundred percent improvement. Yeah. Uh, uh, graphic theory. There is definitely a uh, a, a tough and pass to him. He seems driven. Not necessarily, you know, untrustworthy per yes. se, but definitely a man of little patience yeah. and currently does not seem to be too pleased with the fact that he's essentially babysitting in his mind. Is there a marshmallow center? <laughs> Always. You may find out in due time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is too hard to read at this moment. <laughs> Uh, can I, uh, is, if you're in the bazaar, do I have to be out of the city to cast Locate Creature? Is that something I can do? You can cast that anywhere you want to. Your magic is divine. You're, this is your city. And that's a, not just a descriptor, either. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Thank you. It's not only fabulous, but not in this city. Uh, so then, can, how, do I, how do I go about casting Locate Creature? Uh, you can just tell me. You'd like to go ahead and do I'd it. I'd like to go ahead and cast Locate Creature. <laughs> All right, so as you guys are having this discussion, you're having this weird stare off and considering where to go in the bazaar. You stop in the nearby alley, two buildings down from where the, the Slayer's Take Guild Hall is, and you begin just taking a uh, small dagger from your side and carving a circle in the ground. Throw some runes down that are specific to uh, to your uh, patron. Um, take a moment and and concentrate on the description of this Raksa, uh, Rakshasa. Um, looking at the, uh, the specifics of the spell to make sure that I don't give you any misinformation. Let's see here. Okay, creature. Rakshasa. Beautiful. <laughs> you, uh, you focus your mind for a second, and your holy symbol begins to drift out from underneath your armor. You instinctively take it, slap it down underneath, uh, and then refocus your vision. Your eyes close, and you can see it looks like a pulsing energy of like a very, very dark flame. Something that in itself you could already smell the sulfur. You can smell the uh, the lineage, the devil lineage that this entity is, and there is indeed one not too terribly far from where you currently are. Um, it's faint, which means it's in the outskirts, and you know this lasts for a good, about a thousand feet or so, but it does give you a northeastern direction, and then the spell fades. Northeastern direction. We should go northeast. It's also unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, closer than we thought. Hmm. In the walls of the city? Not in the walls, but very close to them. Do we have any type of plan of attack? Does anyone know how to fight these things? Any earthly clue? Leader boy. Leader boy. Oh, I'm sorry, you talking to me? Torbiot is what they meant to say. Yeah. Listen to Stormfather over here and 
I take we, my social cues from other people. I'm sorry. In my experience, there has not been a problem invented that can't be solved with an axe. Well, that's true. We've seen that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderfully helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. welcome. Follow the axe. Now, Don't what I want you to do is imagine an hourglass. You got that good picture of an hourglass in your heads? Yes. See all that sand draining out? <clears throat> Let's get a move on. Okay, what am I doing with the sand? I agree with that. I'm... Are we supposed to do something with the sand? Yeah. Count it. Oh, that's so oh, difficult. That would take so long. Can we tag you? She always it? like this? Yes, she's. I j Storm clouds counting sand. I don't know what she's doing over here. We Northeast. How about let's start walking that way and see what happens? Can we give that a shot? I agree. <clears throat> you did the fancy spell. It's not as fancy as you might think. Oh. Yeah, so I've pulled my um, I pulled my axe out, I'm sort of holding it like a walking stick. Okay. And just very deliberately, very demonstratively walking ahead. In that direction. With each footfall, you know the the what was once probably hundreds of years ago a nice stone or cobblestone uh, roadway in the center of the city has been slowly hit with mud, dirt, snow, sleet, and so each step is a slight moisture. With each, <coughs> I'm assuming there's no stables around. Uh, not immediately. Those are usually towards the very very outside of the Why city. Are you jonesing for a horse? Can we get your boots all dirty? <laughs> 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 Torbeer, uh, leading forward in the northeastern direction that was given by uh, by Brother Cash, um, eventually brings you around the side of the bazaar onto one of the, uh, and you see right now it's called the quad roads, there are two main roads that uh, meet right where the bazaar occurs and then they spread off into the other sections of the city. Uh, to the northeastern section, from your guys' perspective, um, the district begins to drift into another district that you have not previously visited. Uh, this district is, you've heard it mentioned before, it's known as the Dusk Meadow. Dusk Meadow. Now, previous sections you've been have been worshippers of uh, Bahamut, the Platinum Dragon. Uh, there was the, uh, the Braving Grounds, which is worship's core, the God of Strength and, and Warfare and Honor. Uh, the Quad Roads, which is under Arathis, the deity of civilization and invention. The Dusk Meadow falls under the watchful eye of the Raven Queen, yeah. the goddess of death. <laughs> um, that large obsidian-type structure that you were led to earlier as the temple resides in the center of this district. Um, and you've heard mention before of a few of the things that exist here, that being probably Raven's Crest, which is the main temple uh, to the Raven Queen. It's also where the Amaranthine Oubliette is located, which is essentially the prison of the entire city of Asselheim. The, the what? The Amaranthine Oubliette. Oubliette. In, in, the em Amaranthine Oubliette. Amaranth... Um, Amaranthine Amaranth Oubliette. Oh, look, there it is, there it is. Amaranth. Uh, this is also where most of the dead of the city are interred into a series of catacombs that are built deep beneath this section of the city. Um, Far enough away from the Oubliette to the point where there isn't crossover and is enough of escape. This, that apparently has happened in the past history of the city. Um, as you begin pushing towards the edge of where the two districts meet, you can see that there is an area of the town that, for lack of a better term, it's, it's a more jovial than expected area. There are a series of stands put up along the side of the road. There's a lot of beggars sitting on the side of the street that are currently panhandling to those who walk by. Uh, there are a number of uh, taverns, you could hear music coming from various establishments, and it seems almost like the closer you get to the the uh, death-oriented district on the border to the quad roads, the more and more it pushes into uh, a a shadier Mardi Gras type experience. So you make your way towards that dividing line there. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, what's the toilet? Ask around and see if anything's been a little out of the ordinary, or maybe in the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like that phrasing. Mm -hmm. I have to imagine anywhere this thing goes, there's going to be strange deaths associated with it. We might as well look there. Ah, that's actually a good idea as well. 
And where we're walking, is it, are there shops and stands as well, or is it residential? There are, many that sell just jewelry, many that sell very, very well-made uh, clothing, some of them like party attire. Uh, there are some that sell exotic fruits that have been imported in various states of uh, ripeness. Is anyone selling any masks? Uh, make a perception check. Hmm. Passive or active? That'd be an active perception check as you're seeking it. Uh, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh, you do glance around, and there is one cart that carries more like costume party attire supplies. Uh, it doesn't seem to have too many customers on it, but they do have a couple of masks that are on display. Are there any any masks that look like tiger masks? Uh, looking at it, there are none that are tiger specific. No, they seem to be molded leather and uh, some more impish, goblin-y in appearance. Uh, is there someone working the sand? There is, yes. Uh, you see uh, a woman in her 40s or so, uh, thin, with a big toothy smile. Uh, her hair is pulled back into a tight bun. You can see there's a little bit of their, her blondish hair is turning to gray on the sides around her ears, Reed Richards style. Did, um, you said this town was, uh, like, this is like Bahamut kind of town too, or is this, is, has nothing The Bahamut to do? section is far away. Okay. That, that's, that, that's another section of the city. You are now, Dusk right? Meadow. Dusk yeah. Meadow. Yeah. Okay. You are, you are, you are on, the, on the line between the Dusk Meadow and the quadro, so it's Arathis and the Raven Queen. I'm pulling a mask off the wall. This is uh, a beautiful piece. Do you make them yourself, or do I they do, come in? I do. I make them myself, by hand. Uh, yes. the price. They are quite they beautiful. Are quite lovely. <clears throat> it's a very, we're travelers here. It's a very, I've never seen a neighborhood like this. Uh, is there a festival going on here, or is this pretty much the basic fair of the day here? This is the localized festival of the city. Um, if you've been around Vasselheim long enough, you've seen there is a little Interest and celebration, depending on some places, but uh, at least on this line, some people can appreciate the fleetness that is life yes. and grasp it by the roots and make it its own before it's stepped out. Here particularly, there seems to be electricity in the air almost. It's very bustling. This is the norm around here. Consistently. That's why I come and bring my business here. I wouldn't do very well up north, I'll tell you that. All them. Uh, Dragon types, it looks to you. No offense. All them uh, silver dragon that. lovers have an issue with things as celebratory. And um, and I place, I pull out ten gold, and I spread them on her desk. How many masks? Oh, none. Oh, I would like one. <laughs> Take your pick. I slide one coin away from the other nine, <laughs> and then <laughs> dragging my finger across those, say, is there anything out of the ordinary these days. Go make a persuasion roll. Fifteen. Fifteen? She gives you a look and like she's trying to read you, looks about left and right, glances at you and looks a little, uh, glances at you and looks really Taking her back, and it comes back to you with a kind of a, an escape of comfort. Watching her, I pull out another five and spread them in front of the first nine. Well, I mean, some businesses here are a bit shady, I won't lie, and uh, there are. Chashman's here, madam. There are some long standing businesses that have quarrels. Usually they end in small scuffles, or uh, one purchases the other and asks them from the city. Uh, this is one of the few areas in which the more um, adult pleasures can be found. Um, so there's a lot of money to be had. But recently there's been, um, from least what I've heard, a series of bodies have turned up. There have been a, a few found fished out of by the bastions in the, uh, uh, the water trough on the outskirts of the Dusk Meadow. The Bastions, what are they? The Bastions, who are the, the, the guardians of the city. Oh. Um, they seem to be consistent. When I hear they've been mauled by some sort of strange beast. Uh, mauled. Now, beasts on the outside of the city, that I can see, but from the inside, that is the stuff of nightmares, is it not? Y yes, I would agree. Have you had invaders like this before? I mean, death is not an uncommon occurrence for certain areas of the city, which kind of gestures off to the distant temple. Some people uh, invite it, even. Uh, 
But such violent death like this is usually kept to the outside of the city, uh, at least with some sort of cause. This, this, this is, seems to be a murderous rampage that me personally keep. I don't want to go out at night without protection. Is there Milady. any indication of the cause of death on these corpses? How do they find them? I, I don't know. I, I have not investigated. Perhaps you have to ask the bastions yourself there, or anyone who is in the vicinity. And can you point us in the right direction? Um, uh, she kind of looks around and points off, and you can see uh, m there isn't a whole lot of a, a bastion presence in this portion of the city, but and especially since the bastions are more of a voluntary guard, people that from the different uh, clergies, the different temples, uh, train to become bastions and kind of fit themselves with whatever their deity's armor is, you do see there are two bastions that are armored in a, a very dark, uh, kind of black, dark brown leather that carry a symbol of what looks like a silver raven that is embroidered on one shoulder of a cloak that's tossed to one side. These guys are right here, you're saying? Yeah, oh, they're, they're, across, the thorough, they're across, across the road about maybe a block up, which is, I believe they're bastions from the Dusk Meadow, perhaps you could ask them. Does she have any masks that look like a raven? A raven mask? Uh, she does actually have one that looks like a raven. I want that one. Very well, a good choice. That doesn't quite match the color of your attire, but uh, perhaps I have an outfit that could match for you. Oh! <laughs> oh my god, we're going clothes shopping now. <laughs> I see a... Uh, Actually, sure, do you have a little cloak? Is well, a little oh. cape? Uh, cloak, I don't know, but there is, there is a cloakery um, about four blocks that way on your left. Thank uh, you. They could probably help you there. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. Uh, Anyone I'm, else would like anything? I else? notice a serpent-shaped mask on the wall, and I just pick it up and put it on and say, thank you, madam, much obliged, and walk off and clap for air on the shoulder and keep walking. So Torbear hangs back a little bit and waits for them to get to the door. And then he looks at the, uh, at the shopkeep and, um, do you have any masks? That might fit a little girl. Yes, yes, of, of course. Uh, Turn the dwarf. Um, and she kind of goes and let me see. She goes and rummages through a small bag and pulls out a mask. This uh, little purple mask that seems to have uh, small, fake gems, you know, kind of forming the outside with a couple of ribbons that dangle where it would tie around the head. Uh, it's simple, but it's pretty. Something that it's. it's these, unfortunately, I mean, people bring children to this side of the district, so they don't sell very well. But if you would like one, uh, I would be happy to part with it for uh, uh, two gold. One gold. Take a persuasion roll. <laughs> Eighteen. Woo. <sighs> one gold. <laughs> I guess it is better to settle it than not at all. Here you are. So I must say. say uh, Suck it, haters. <laughs> <laughs> and I must say, I won't tell anyone. But purple is a pretty color on you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. He walks out. All right. <laughs> a few moments pass, you wonder where your dwarven leader has vanished, who steps out through the, uh, the front of the uh, establishment. Let's go. Great. Does everybody, are you, do you have potions? Are you a potion uh, Do you, are we good on items? Are you good on items, Torbier? I'm all right. Are you all right? I'm, I'm, I'm just fine. Well, we're in a rush, but if it's easy, how do you come by potions in this town? Uh, do I know the answer to that? You do. Uh, they're, they're either provided, for, for some of your experience, by the Slayer's Take, but mm -hmm. those are usually offered at the start of a contract. Mm -hmm. Um, the fact that they weren't offered on this means either the, um, they don't have any currently at their disposal, or they felt that this contract probably wouldn't require it with the, the construct of this group being set out. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, they are a little hard to come by. A lot of them are controlled by the main temples and are pretty much given straight to the bastions. Uh, hmm. there, is, there aren't a lot of individuals that are in need of them within the city. And those that travel out are either members of the Slayer's Take or members of the Bastion Force in general. So, so they're, they're a little hard to come by in the sound. Key. I think that if we're going to find them anywhere, it might be around here. Might be we can take some through trade, might be... Maybe some might fall off a Bastion or two. Mm. Mm. Well, let's go talk to one then, shall we? I thought that's what we were doing. Are we going to the two Bastions over there or what? Yes. Yes. Cash off. Good. Mm. One that's other thing you need to know about them? Yes. They're horribly paid, so money talks with these people. 
Very well. As yeah. he like goes ahead, I kind of like keep up my pace to like trail behind him a little bit. Mm, wonderful. Uh, uh, my hood goes up and I'm going. All right, as you guys step across the way, it's about a block up. Um, one of them is partially inside the alley between two of the buildings. You can see he has one hand up on the wall and the other down. Uh, one of them is relieving themselves on the side of the building while the other is kind of keeping watch, arms crossed, kind of looking out across the road. Uh, the one that's immediately present or before you, you can see is uh, human, kind of a scruffy brown beard around the edge of the chin. Uh, the hair itself is cut very short and uh, a little heavier in appearance, maybe muscle, little layer of, uh, of winter padding, but uh, the, the black leather armor definitely gives you the appearance of, of somebody who's a bastion of the Raven Queen. As you approach, the hooded elf, the dwarf walking with the giant axe, and the, uh, the bubbling dragonborn, the, the human cleric with a very angry disposition, and the awkward half-elf druid stepping in pace with him. He gives you all a cursory look and immediately puts a hand to the side where you can see there's a rapier currently sheathed. Hi, You walk with purpose! We walk for the guild. Slayer's sake it is. It is. What business have you in this side of town, then? Aren't you supposed to be out past the walls killing creatures and such? Our business takes us where our business takes us. Our business brings us here today. All right, then what's your business? You might be having some trouble. Aye? Well, it might be what's causing you trouble and what's going to get us out of here might be the same thing. The gentleman to the left of him finishes uh, shaking off the rest of his... Uh, alleyway journey. Any more than twice and you're just playing with it, pal. <laughs> he turns around and kind of put, throws his tunic over. Uh, uh, excuse me! Mm -hmm. it's, it's official bastion business. Anyway, and he kind of nods over to, to the, the bearded gentleman who's looking at you. They, there are certain bits of business that are official in this town. Uh, I don't know how... Uh, Honestly, right it is to be talking with common folk, or even the guild who does what it's like. I'm sorry. You're not talking to common folk. He wants money. That's... I know what he wants. Well, then give it to him so we can get out of here. I'm circling around. Stealth track. Yeah. <laughs> 31. I'm not going to roll. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and you can choose if you want to go persuasion or intimidation on this. You're writing that line. Uh, I'm equally bad at both of them, so I think. <laughs> but I think that Torbeer wants to go intimidation. Right, yeah. Give that a try. Ha <laughs> ha! There it is! Clay? No. Uh, what's the exact opposite? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've heard about it for so long. <laughs> I know, right? It's like you can't believe that it's a real thing. <laughs> it's, you're actually there. Everybody talks about spontaneous combustion, but I never <laughs> believe it, right? It's yes. just a globule on the drum seat. You know, I just feel like this is, I mean, it's silly. It's so silly to like, to, to copy, to do this. Die shame, thing, die yeah, shame. Yeah, but, mm. all right, so. Naughty, <laughs> Yep, so, uh. I don't know what ancient Aztec deity temple you faced when you were a child, but man. All right, so as as, as you lean, please forward. let just let me step into a bucket. Please let me step. Into a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> as you lean forward, forcing your presence uh, upon this bastion, his hand still holding the edge of his rapier, he steps forward into you to the point where you're almost uh, forehead to forehead. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I have to lean down to reach your level. But if you're going to go about asking questions and not offering proper uh, compensation for information, well then, I think we have no business here. Oh, if it's compensation you're looking for, let's just speak plain and uh, pull out uh, four gold. And while he has their attention, I'm going to check out his pockets. Oh, oh shit! Go ahead and make a perception check. All right. 
Ooh, that's not good. I'm gonna use luck. Second luck point. That's better. That's all right. Uh, perception, you said 28. 28. Um, Taking a moment as you kind of sneak up behind the one he's talking to. Like the two guys are kind of shoulder to shoulder, squaring off with the rest of this group. Yes. Um, the one that had been relieving himself in the alleyway is a little bit closer to you. You can see as he kind of you know, put his tunic right and everything, he jostled around and he revealed a couple of uh, small pouches on his side, one of which you heard the clinking of glass on the inside. Uh, go ahead and make a sleight of hand check. Sleight of hand. Go, Rogue, go. Does, I'm wearing a cloak of elven kind, which I know affects stealth checks, but not, not sleight of hand. hand. All, right. This is, all right, that's all right. This is pure... 20. 20. All right. You uh, you reach over and find the edge of the, uh, the the leather loop that attaches itself to the side of this, this Bastion's belt. You tug ever so gently to the side, the loop releases, and you pull it off seemingly without any noticing. Uh, as you pull out the four gold, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Bastion kind of looks at it, stops, and goes, really, a piddling fee for this? What's to let me think that you aren't actually part of this murder scheme? You just walk up and try and start asking questions like this. First off, where'd you hear about it? Second, you look like the kind that would be go ahead and mauling folks in the streets, do you not, Sir Dwarf? You got the eyes of one who's probably done a few dark deeds. Oh, I have. More than you can imagine. And explain to me why we shouldn't take him for questioning right now, and he pulls his rapier out. Hold on, everybody calm down. Hi, I'm Tiberius Stormwind. <clears throat> My, my, my friend uh, Torby, he didn't mean to offend, of course, but you just were essentially off. The blade whoosh, up towards your face, and he says, Look, dragon man, yes. I was talking to the dwarf. You, I have no business with at the moment. Whoosh. So, you've got ten seconds before we take you in. I reach into my pocket and, uh, like, sort of rattle my coins around a little bit. Maybe I could uh, buy us some time and uh, drop 10 gold out into my other hand. Don't make persuasion roll. <laughs> <laughs> One! No, <laughs> eject it! That's funny, I rolled a three on this time. Uh, yeah, so that's gonna be... Um, that's gonna be a six, <laughs> guys. I think we're fighting the Bastions. <laughs> just, I feel like maybe. I feel like maybe it's going that way. Do you roll one? I roll a one. <laughs> so you all have really low self confidence. Uh, <laughs> uh, pushing forward the coins in a, a semi awkward, forceful manner, the Bastion himself also seems to be caught off guard and looks down and looks about, the, realizing that now it looks like you are visibly out in the open, paying money to the Bastions, and he kind of looks back. With, Oh, quick, don't stand out in public, do it! And he kind of pulls you all off into the alleyway to the side of the complex, mm. uh, out of the middle of the, the, the area, into the shade between the buildings. And he reaches over, and takes the coins from your hand, and kind of hurries them into a pocket and says, All right, look. I'll tell you what we know, but if you're going to be messing around with this investigation, I ask that you don't let anyone know that you spoke with us. This is all on your own. And if you do say anything, we'll deny it. And we'll make sure to put you and the oblet yourself for this. All right? Fair enough. All right. All right. Now, we have found a series of bodies over the past few years, scattered about a few months at a time between, all with a similar pattern of death to them. We found large portions, the meaty portions of the body have been torn away, some of them apparently eaten. There are marks that are indicative of some sort of beast ravaging the corpses. But no signs of a beast coming or going. We've had many of the finest trackers looking for any sort of sign of a creature that may have found its way into the city, living in the rooftops, or the gutters, perhaps even the sewers. No sign of any such creature traveling amongst any of these scenes. Now, all the bodies have also been found wrapped up and discarded in the canals. A lot of them surrounding the abundant terrace. That's the, uh, I'm looking around at the rest of you. That's where Melora's eyes watchful. Now it's 
really got us confused as of late is the most recent murder we found was a very powerful merchant lord from Moncarel, one that's been in the city for no more than a month. And uh, he's well known in these parts as bringing in a lot of business. His caravans come through via various sky ships, and he brings with himself an influx of much needed merchantile in the city. What's his name? Not allowed to say. You're not allowed to say? The merchant's name is Tyrrell, but you. What? Tyrrell. Lord Tyrrell. Don't, if you say any of this to any of our people, I swear I'll make your life the hardest it's been in months. And from the looks of you, you've all had a very, very hard few months. Oh. Lord Tyrrell's body was found, but apparently during the murder. We have one beggar that apparently caught sight of this. Uh, the murderer, best we can tell, is some sort of lycanthrop. Uh, the beggar was Babylon, but it seemed there was some sort of a wolf-like creature that was seen, bipedal, walking like a man, but tore this man right through the throat, most of its chest. But when spotted, didn't run, just vanished, disappeared. No longer in his sight. No tracks left behind, just gone. We don't know if it's some sort of angry poltergeist ghost. But uh, the last place he was staying was at a recent establishment. Only been here a couple years. Referred to as the Velvet Cabaret. The Velvet Cabaret is a very high-end place. I know it well. You do. It gives you a look of... I've heard about it from... Somewhere else. Scanlan? Have you been talking to Scanlan? <laughs> He's all. Don't know who that is, Storm Shadow. He, he likes horror. <laughs> uh, okay. It's weird. <clears throat> Storm. Okay, okay, close. Now, based on the fact that, that the Lord had been staying at the uh, Velvet Cabaret for some time, and we were feeling pretty close to possibly finding the source of these murders, our bastion force from the uh, Dust Meadow worked with the Quad Roads, and we actually raided it. Found nothing. With the patrons, no sign of any sort of foul play. We were forced to leave empty-handed. That's all we've got. I have a question about the bodies. Have you seen them? I've only seen the most recent. The rest I've just heard of. Is there anything similar with them? Are they all men? Are they all women? Are they children? No children. Um, most of them seem to be well-off to do folk. Dressed well. Wealthy men and women. And you say you've searched everywhere, including the catacombs. Well, the catacombs themselves are seared off. We've asked around, and there's been no sign of movement in or out. And uh, God forbid anyone stays in those places. That's a nasty place to be staying. It is indeed. Is there a way that the bastions could organize some kind of gathering of sorts, uh, perhaps a, a, a mandatory town meeting, where all, all would have to gather for maybe an announcement? Or, Something official. Uh, All the bastions, that's near impossible. The city's scattered politically enough as it is. I mean, we can be rallied whenever there's some sort of a force coming against the city, but when it comes to nothing of any main particular reason, just the investigators take care of it themselves. He serves the Raven Queen, right? He's got the Raven Queen patch on him? Yeah. This, this part of town, death isn't the worst thing in the world. Lots of planes other than ours. Might be you're a little bit closer to them than some of the rest of us are. We're underneath the mountain. You wouldn't happen to know about anyone performing any rituals or maybe opening up lines of communication that may have been invaded, disturbed. I certainly hope not. Any sort of communion rituals are sanctified and held within uh, the actual temple to the Raven Queen itself. They, if anyone's doing any business, there's a very watchful eye over the city. Anything that's unsanctioned, I can guarantee you will know about it. May we seek audience with this Raven Queen? <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, she's, she's like a 
goddess. Oh, she doesn't, she's not like here? She's not like a queen, she's like a She's like a, a goddess. Like a queen? Yeah. You can see the two the two bastions are kind of looking at each other with the expression of, really? <laughs> <laughs> We're new around here. Listen, we've talked long enough. We've got to get back to our posts. Oh, oh wait, wait. You mentioned investigators? Well, there are different people assigned to investigate, and we were part of the team that was sent as part of the investigation raid on the Velvet Cabaret. Ah, uh, so it's not like a group of people, it's just you're, you're an investigator today, kind of That's thing. part of what we do as Bastions, eh? <clears throat> gotcha. Mm. Uh, is there anyone else a part of the investigation team that you think would be good to talk to? I wouldn't have any information beyond what we do, no. We keep Can I do an inside check on him and make sure he's been like... Yeah, go for it. Forefront. 23. He seems forthright enough. He seems impatient and a little flustered with the fact that you've been pushing these questions to him, but he doesn't seem to be trying to cover anything necessarily. Did he tell us where they found the, I don't think, that didn't write this down, so. I'll, yeah. Do you? And Lord Tyrrell factored in how? Can you tell us? Lord Tyrrell was the last Tell us where you found the body of the merchant lord. Have we heard of him before? The body was found on the side alley to the Velvet Cabaret. And you said wrapped up? Or just the ones in the river were wrapped up? The ones that were found in the river, they were wrapped up in blankets. Whatever put them aside was not some beast that threw it. There was some intelligence to this. They were placed deliberately, which means don't think there's just one thing doing this. Were the blankets the same or were they all different? They seem to be different. Some were, some were just scattered cloth, some were tattered sheets, some were bolts of fine material. It really varied, there was no pattern to it. And did you, were you able to see, was anything missing from Lord Tyrell? Nothing more than uh, his throat, his trachea. Mm. We pumped these guys for all they got. <clears throat> yeah. You're all right. Sorry about that. It's all right, just Maybe offer a little more coin up front next time. <sighs> be well, and if you hear anything, funny information, come straight to us. Don't be getting to official business. Now you're sanctified as a slayer, but don't make us look bad. And they kind of step around you guys and back out into the main street. Velvet Cabaret? Velvet Cabaret? So. It's yes. close. So. We know that this guy, while we walk there, I was talking, um, we know that this guy is a demon from the Nine Hells, and so he, he seems to be targeting wealthy people. Do you think these are people that he tried to get under his control, under his servitude, and it didn't go his way, so he ended up killing them? Probably. Folk don't go into the Velvet Cabaret unless they got a lot of coin. Hmm. Someone like Lord Tyrrell do we know anything about him? Does his name ring any bells for us at all? Yeah. Whole history check. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> no. It happened again. There's no way. This is unprecedented. You're the nigga Percy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just telling you. I'm just <laughs> telling you. This is impressive. <laughs> right? Wow. It's impressive. You it's think impressive. it isn't real? You think it's a thing I make jokes about? Wow. You take a moment. To conjecture where you may have heard the name, what was the name again? Oh, the guy, you know, the, from Battlestar Galactica. Oh, oh, what was his name, Adama? Do you want to roll his history check as well? Adama. Sure, I, sure. We'll go here. I, I did, did want to find my right, right now. Now. 20? You 20, add your history modifier. Add my history. 20. <laughs> so total, 20. Total of 20. Yeah. All righty. You. You've heard of the city of Ankarel. It's a desert city from a long ways away, but you aren't specifically aware of this individual. You, however, Kasha, um, you know that uh, Lord Tyrrell has come through this city a few times um, in the past year or so. You've only been here for a short time yourself, but in the time that you've been here, you've uh, heard tales of uh, this large caravan that comes through. It is a parade. It usually brings with him a good 12, 13 different uh, carts that contain 
all sorts of jewels and materials and, and tapestries and fine material, fine silks and and uh, it's 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 almost a small party whenever this is this long walking uh, caravan is brought to the city. And so you are, you are aware of this individual and kind of surprised that the deaf has been kept so hush hush. And are there are there rumors about him bringing in anything else, anything illicit, or is it kind of what you see is what you get? As far as you know, no information about that has caught your ear per se. Okay. But the fact that he's staying in this district, who knows? Folks tend to stay. Let me try that again. Folk tend to stay with their own class. These victims are all wealthy folk. And they seem to have the Velvet Cabaret in common. It's very likely that we're dealing with somebody who's rich and powerful. What does a demon need money for? Who says he's after money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seems to be after power. Terrell was passing through. I wonder how many people would notice him gone here in Vasselheim. I'm sure uh, quite a few. And it seems like it's no secret when he comes to town. There was a party every time he showed up. And according to the guards, these murders have been going on the past few years. So it seems like whatever we're de dealing with might have time to plan ahead. If he's been aware of the past few times that Tyrell has come through the town and could possibly know the next time he's coming through. And if we could pinpoint when it actually started, like we know years, but actually when, then we can actually narrow it down to the establishments and other things that were established then. Uh, would there be a place where we could inquire as to some sort of ledger, like, like when this guy comes in and <coughs> with the intention of trying to correlate it with when different murders have happened? Um, actually, I take that back. Torby doesn't think that deeply. That's not the thing that he wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a lot of thinking and not a lot of hitting things. <laughs> For all we know, RP? this killer could be hiding in plain sight at the cabaret. Could be an employee there. Or the owner himself. How long ago was, did the dwarves, or how long ago did the Bastion say that they raided the Velvet Cabaret? It was but, a month ago, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, well, it was, it was a few weeks back when the, when the murder occurred, yeah. So here's my question. Do you think he would stick around after it was raided? Or do you think he'd move on? The thing is vanishing upon sight. I don't and think gotten away with it for the last two or three years. I don't think he cares much anymore. My well, question is, there. we have yes. three days. Cabaret is the only lead we have. Well, I think it's three How days. How do we draw this person, he or she, out? Yeah, I, I believe it's three days once the... No, we have three days have, to tolerate. Three days. We just have three days. Yep, three days to complete we, we the contract. We could merchants. Slaying the entity that you're business. contracting well, to. You to I was going to say that you look like a man who knows wealth. Yes. I've spent time with wealth. Well, I never have, so... I would think maybe if you were a merchant coming into town, very wealthy, looking for some adult entertainment, might be a way to bring him out at the forefront. Ooh, I agree. I, I cast Alter Self on myself and uh, turn myself into uh, Elf. All right. You're half Elf, right? Half Elf. So I'll turn into half Elf. All and, right. And uh, like akin to... I look regal. A regal looking half Elf. High, highborn high, half Elf. All right. Fair enough. And even in comparison to uh, to Vax, your, your attire is very nice. Does this mean I should Do go it. change clothes? You were going to go shopping. I was. I mean, you look okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Let's go. I jingle what gold I have in a pouch in front of Keyleth's face, and so let's go shopping. Come on. Okay. Right. Shopping montage. <laughs> <laughs> as, as you guys go Dressing off to shop sequence. for, for oh, better-looking, well-to-do attire, uh, we'll go ahead and take a quick five-minute break. Yeah, exactly. oh, yes. uh, return here, and, and as you guys continue to the next step of your uh, your hunt for the Rakshasa. Um, oh, Kirill! That's I just remembered. <laughs> I just remembered his name. That's <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> what it. Oh, I just remembered. <laughs> what a silly thing to forget. <laughs> As the Rakshasa bears down on her head. Oh, oh, I'm oh, oh, hey! Well, I just thought it was a tombstone. Uh, so take a quick five-minute break. First off, before we get to that, guys, uh, a big thank you to Negihama once again. 
our patron saint of ridiculous gifts, Ayama. who purchased these sconces to put yes. on the walls. Wow. Wow. They're legit. Um, Are those cool. sconces awesome? Cool. They're, they're awesome. That's amazing. Um, the LEDs change colors. I know. Mm-hmm. So cool. Uh, reminder, every 100 subs, we're giving away uh, the signed picture and the signed full-scale poster of Kit's art. And uh, for the break, the five-minute break, we're going to take a little fast. We have an awesome video that was presented to us by some of the critters that I think you'll also appreciate as well. So we'll go ahead and roll that and use the potty. We'll see you guys here in a few minutes. Cool. Hey guys, Hector here. Gonna tell you about what's happening tomorrow on Group Hug, the show where we reenact famous comic book battles with Hero Clicks, the tabletop game. We've got an awesome show lined up tomorrow with some fantastic guests, including Scott Porter, who is an actor you may know from Speed Racer, uh, Friday Night Lights, Heart of Dixie. He did the voice of Nightwing on Batman Arkham Knight. He did the voice of Cyclops in Marvel Heroes. Plus, we've got the creative director of Marvel Heroes, Ryan Collins. Both of these guys are huge Hero Clicks fans. It's gonna be an awesome, awesome show. Why? Because we are reenacting the classic comic book crossover, Avengers vs. X-Men. This thing is epic. It's awesome. And hopefully tomorrow, we're going to rewrite some comic book history. So tune in for Group Hug, Fridays, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. What's we're, that? We're, we're also going to open an entire box of the new Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Hero Click setup. Are you kidding me? I forgot me? to tell you. It was oh kind my of God. a special thing. Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to open up an entire boost, like the whole box. The whole brick? Yeah. Oh, this is good. Mm. The thing with the exclusive Hulkbuster Mark II, like Build-A-Figure thing? Maybe. Oh, this is good. I don't know. Guys. We don't know. We're going to unbox it on the show. It's brand new. Like, brand spanking Tune in new. for that. This stuff is, like, so awesome. Uh, I cannot. Excited. I am very excited. So, again, group hug, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, every Friday. Check it out right here in Geek and Sundry. Bye. Hello, everyone. This is Pete, also known as Pete Wiz, on the Geek and Sundry Twitch chat. Uh, this is a video, you know, to, from us, the fans, to the Geek and Sundry crew, and the hosts, and everyone, as our way to say thank you, because you have given us so much, you know, uh, memories, and uh, treasured moments, thing that we want to give something back, so here is something from us to you. Enjoy. Hey guys, Megan here, better known as Morak101 in the chat room. I'd like to start by saying congratulations to the entire cast and crew of Critical Role, as well as the Geek and Sundry Twitch channel, on 20 amazing episodes. Here's hoping for 20 more. I'm not sure you guys hear often enough how much your work means to us, the fans, so here's just a short story for me. A couple weeks ago, I was in a really bad headspace angry at the world and life in general, and I couldn't really find a way out of it. But that Thursday, I turned on Critical Role, as I do every week, and the first thing I see is Scanlan taking a dump in Pike's Temple. It cracked me up. I'm talking double me over, side splitting, your face hurts so much because you're smiling so hard, laughter. And at that moment in time, it was exactly what I needed. So thank you. Thank you for reminding me how to laugh, and thank you for making the world, at least mine, a little bit better place. Back. Hello Geek and Sundry, hello Critical Role, my name is the DJ Strong, and I am a critter. I just wanted to say thank you, I don't really have anything other than thank you to say. Thank you for being entertaining, thank you for being here, thank you for keeping me company, 
Thank you for your pseudo Twitter friendships. Um, I really appreciate everything you guys do. And uh, while I'm not financially able to uh, subscribe and donate as much as I would like to, um, I still appreciate and follow what you guys do. And um, hopefully this will put a smile on your face. And that's all I got. Thanks, guys. Hello and all you lovely and talented people over at Critical Role. I am Fudokamioka on Twitter, and I am proud to say that I am a critter. You guys are amazing. You guys have your jobs, whether it's voice acting or just acting. And yet you still find time to show up and give us all some entertainment for a few hours, week by week, sometimes missing a week. But all I can say is thank you. Thank you very much. And I hope you continue to do this for a long time including us you've done something great you've you've changed the game you've made a community and i'm so grateful to be a part of that all right hello everybody at the geek and sundry twitch stream this is all the in front of the twitch chat this is a small thank you video that i made uh, in, which is part of a bigger project that was started i think by pete weeks and maybe some other people that i don't know but like i said it's a small thank you to everybody working there on the stream whether you be a host uh, whether you be a crew member or somebody be yeah, the thing that we don't know that works for the streams what you guys do is simply amazing uh, the community that you created and everybody revolving around it it's just amazing i know that many people have told you that they've been through rough times and everything and i know that i'm one of these people ever since i found this stream back in march during the Lupus charity drive uh, it's been going way better for me and it would be a lie to say that you guys have nothing to do with it so thank you for that uh, and I would like also to thank you all for welcoming me when I visited you guys back in the beginning of August it was some wonderful times and I'm looking forward to maybe meet you again once I'm gonna be back in, in uh, LA there. my name is Matt Abernathy uh, also if you work in the Twitch chat and the guy who made the uh, the t-shirts. Just wanted to say congratulations on 20 episodes um, and thank you uh, Critical Role Crew and Geek & Center um, for just bringing hours of entertainment on uh, every Thursday night. Critical Role and just d, &D in general kind of taking over my life and it's fantastic. Um, so yeah, thanks and here's to 20 more episodes. <laughs> Hello, my name is Fu Kidon. I would like to say a huge thank you to everyone at Geek and Sunday, especially those in a critical role. You have inspired many people to embrace their passions and help us be proud of our geekiness. Thanks to you, I have found my passion again for gaming, including D&D. You have also helped many like myself by bringing a light into an otherwise dark place. From the bottom of my heart, I sincerely thank you. Long live the geek in all of us. I'm going on a book tour to Jersey and New York, Boston and Toronto, Phoenix, Austin, to Portland and Seattle, San Fran, Los Angeles, and in Santa Cruz I just might meet a dolphin. <laughs> so many places I will see, come by my book and you'll meet me as I say these
Welcome back. I assume we'll have a Liam here in just a moment. He, he's just stopped. He's right going tinkle. He's, yeah, he's, he's stealthy. He <laughs> rolled a 28 <laughs> and disappeared. I was talking Liam's ear off during the break about uh, how much I love the, dy the dynamic among the, well, the three of you. Oh, this has been... Um, and and uh, uh, sort of commiserating about how you feel really naked and exposed when your whole party isn't together. Mm -hmm. And how weird that feels to not have everybody together at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so I think I kept him from the bathroom. Oh, um, gotcha. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. He'll arrive. Um, when he comes in, we all just awkwardly stare. I'm like, just down. like Santa? Yeah, we'll do that. So when he arrives, we'll all just take that <laughs> um, <laughs> But in the meantime, uh, you guys have you managed to go back and step. <laughs> Disadvantage on my next five attack. <laughs> <laughs> I love the awkward stare. It was great. Yeah, that, that's a, he's actually a very generous uh, DM if he does that. I actually make my players roll damage when they upset me. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Good to go. Yeah. Dude, D six damage. You annoyed the GM. <laughs> The wrath of the gods comes down upon you. Yeah. Um, perfect. So, you guys have, have taken a few moments to acquire um, outfits that seem a little more fitting as to the establishment you're planning to to go and, and uh, enter. Uh, guys, we should have aliases. Can we have aliases? Okay. Yeah, I'll be Torbeer. I like it. Ooh, it's easy to remember. Yeah. Very easy. Um, I want to be something, ooh, you know what? Maybe I could, ooh, would it be weird if I'm yes. Vex? That's weird, isn't it? Mm, yes. That's really weird. Okay. <laughs> um, what's a good What's a good Elven name? What's something common in Elven? You are around this stuff. All of my people have like, you know, weird kind of tribal names. What's good? Um, well, like Vera. Elvira like is nice. Uh, Coraline. Coraline. Oh, Coraline. Do I look like a Coraline? Sure. What does a Coraline look like? I'm Coraline. Just uh, I will be uh, no, Scanlan uh, short haul. Oh, what you I so what you can be Scanlan, but I couldn't be couldn't be. Well, like I Vex? can't be. No, no, you can't do that. I'm just saying it's weird. That's right? double standard, Vax. I'm just saying. I think it's maybe because you're not his sister, and that it would be weird because like that's his sister's name. You have a sister. I have a twin. Yes. What does she look like? Oh. <laughs> <coughs> but, but she's a female. <clears throat> she sounds lovely. <coughs> Humans, am I right? <laughs> she's very nice. <laughs> and, That's what and they say about all the ugly girls. She's very nice. Put them all on an island. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I feel like I'm learning so much from you. Is <clears throat> that what they say? Life lessons, yeah. yes. Yeah, wonderful. <clears throat> Crazy. Tell the cabaret? To the cabaret. Yes. So I presume that uh, I'll play the role of your guard. Buddy guard, yes. What does that make me? How about your valet? <laughs> You'll need one if you're wealthy. Do you have a human, though? Of course. <laughs> of course I would have a human. Being uh, elven. <clears throat> I say, are we on the, the way right there now? Yeah, we're walking and talking. Okay. okay. And you're, you're, you are changed into an elf. Now I changed. I didn't change because it only lasts a certain amount of time. So I'm like, a boy or a goo? I have to. I'm a boy. Okay. <laughs> so I'm are a you, boy. Are you Lord Vex? What's wrong with being a girl? Lord Scanlan of the Short Halts. Lord Scanlan. Okay. <laughs> Lord Scanlan of, of the, I'm sorry, of the what? Of the Short Halts. The Short <laughs> Halts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have and a cobbling empire. Of shoes. course you do. Shoes. Okay. Okay. We have a couple of short small holes. shoes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lord Scanlan of the short we holes. Make shoes. We cater mostly to uh, halflings and gnomes. Uh, everyone, but specifically because they're so underserved. You have a gnome shoe empire. Rolling in it, baby. Okay. Um, yes. What is what your do empire, do human? Who am I? Who, who, I have who no am I? empire. I'm his valet. In this equation. Well, I'd like for partners. Yeah, I, I'd um, say. Am I your wife? <laughs> Do you want to be? Is that weird? <laughs> no! I say it's equally... Uh, no! I think that's fine. It's no, fine. it's fine. Yeah. yeah, I can be your wife. I can RP this. I mean, I can What does RP mean? 
I can, I can, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So Coraline and Short Hall. Right, done and done. Torbeer is pulling on his beard and breathing deeply. <laughs> <laughs> and now I cast Alter Self. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cast, there's a flash of light. You guys can all pick up the very, very heavy smell of breakfast ale emanating from the deeply breathing angry dwarf. Um, Wait, Vax, this point. what was my role in this? Uh, you are an advisor, a financial advisor. Financial advisor, excellent. All right. Uh, you guys make your way to uh, a little bit further north of this, about... Uh, five or six blocks until you get to the outskirts of the Velvet Cabaret, which, based on the description you've gotten from a few individuals that you asked around, very easy to find. The uh, Fancy House of Entertainment, it is a two-story building of dark cherry wood uh, with strips of what looks like black uh, suede bolted in a pattern along the outside of it. It stands out like a sore thumb against the rest of the architecture, but in itself looks like a Life of term, a medieval nightclub. It, it looks very, very gaudy, but in a way that the, the garishness looks expensive, and so you can't really fault it for looking the way it does. Um, it's like a cruise ship goth club. I like that. I'll take that. <laughs> a cruise ship. Record, if any of you guys can club. find... Uh, that's a thing that exists. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Are we going to this? Wow. <laughs> Every year on the Jonathan Colton cruise, for we gather in the cruise ship goth club. Executive goths? Wow. <laughs> Joe, Joe Poe cruise. Ding. Yeah. Too many jokes. Too many jokes. I know. Too many jokes. <laughs> <laughs> too many jokes. <laughs> too many jokes. <laughs> and instead of the front, you can see there are two bouncers established at the very front. Uh, the, to the left, you see a, a meaty male dragonborn uh, of bronze scale with painted uh, face scars that kind of. He has a very, very intense look about him. He's thicker, he's kind of built like a barrel, and he sits with his arms crossed, looking angrily amongst the rest of the folks outside. Uh, to the other side, you recognize a burly-looking female with short hair and some uh, facial tattoos. The Siren, who you saw battle in the cauldron, apparently works as one of the bouncers of the Velvet Cabaret. I approach the, uh, right, right next to uh, Vax as we move up, and in, <coughs> in, in, in Draconic, Scanlan, in Draconic, I go, uh, greetings and salutations, friend. Gives you a, a look of, of, of confusion for a second, and leans forward, and the, uh, the dragonborn looks very intently at you and says back in Draconic, "Are you a member?" Um, no, not yet. We are new to this place. Uh, my my master here is uh, seeking uh, audience with uh, his kind. Uh, we were guided to this place and establishment. It has a high reputation. To inquire how to get inside. Looks over to the siren, the siren kind of glances back and. What's he saying? And the dragonborn kind of glances over and says it out loud in common now to this point. Uh, he's saying that they're looking to come in here and talk to other elvish guys, I guess. Oh, uh, not elvish, but what people of, you know, high society, or oh. high society here. Make a, make a persuasion check. Excellent. Uh, the 21. 21? Can we give us a glance over? Well, if you're not a member, you can acquire membership, but it has to be approved first by the owner. Uh, maybe seek audience with him to ask or apply or however that goes about. Let me get his assistant. Hold on just a second. Siren. She kind of gives a look. I'll be right back. And she kind of you know, rolls up her sleeves and steps inside as the door opens immediately. As I see her, I kind of just turn and face outward. All right. Just kind of turn you, away from her. Do you know her? No. Okay. We don't. Uh, as the door opens, you can already hear what sounds like soft harp music coming from the interior. Uh, and it's hard to actually look inside because you can see there are silks draped crossed over in front of the entryway uh, as soon as you step in. Um, a few moments pass, eventually the siren returns, and you are greeted at the doorway by a, a dwarf uh, with very, very well-groomed uh, facial hair, a beard that comes to a fine point, that has a little uh, gold ring at the very bottom that kind of contains it into a little at the bottom, so poof. Um, with makeup on, 
uh, very rosy cheeks, and you can see there is eyeliner on his eyes. Uh, <laughs> smile to his face, and wearing these long white robes, uh, lots of jewelry, and uh, the rest of his kind of dark brown hair is pulled into a dual ponytail that runs down to the middle and back. Comes to the door and immediately uh, says, Gracious welcome to all of you. I've been told that you're seeking possible uh, membership to our establishment. In Dwarvers, I say, that's correct. Well, fantastic then. Don't leave possible patrons outside. And looks off to the, the two bouncers, and they kind of grumble and step off to the side. Come in, come in, follow me. And he steps inside. As you guys uh, walk in behind him, uh, immediately you're hit with uh, the strong smell of, of uh, exotic incense and uh, sounds like the cooking of, of meat mingling with that. It has this kind of this, this smell of everything good you've ever smelled mixed into one location. Um, <coughs> Love the, the uh, smell of these places. <laughs> the, the interior is very low lit with what looks like a series of, po- of fairy fire lamps dangling in small lattice cages. Uh, so it has this kind of light purplish pink glow to the general interior. There are no stools or chairs. There are tables that are low set, and the floor is nearly covered with very, very expensive looking pillows. And all the patrons are currently sitting cross-legged or laying around the tables, and you can see the clientele here is very well dressed and very wealthy. And there's laughter and conversation, and this definitely has a very, very different air. It's like stepping into a whole different world from what you're used to seeing in Vasselheim. And you get the feeling that whoever created this establishment definitely created it to provide a very different experience to most people that work here, which means, one, it probably makes a really good killing to the small number of clientele. Number two, it probably isn't very well liked by the people who've been living here most of their life. Um, as you look around, too, there are dice games being played, there are many gold pieces stacked up at the <coughs> tables. It appears that there's definitely a lively... Uh, 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 a, a lively... What's the word I'm looking for? My brain isn't working. Uh, gambling uh, arrangement in this, this, this place. Um, <coughs> you notice that all the uh, <coughs> the guards on the inside, the bouncers, are look like common cell swords. There's no uh, unification to their uh, their adornments or any of their armor and stuff. There are a few folks that are just kind of looking around, keeping the peace, arms crossed. They're all definitely have weapons visible, and they're just kind of sitting there, guarding just like the bouncers were at the front of the place. Um, How many dwarves? Uh, just the one who led you inside. I reach over and I just. Grab Vax's hand. And I fold her arm in and walk forward. All right. And I think as they move forward, I would like to pull Torbeer aside and say, maybe since we're trying to get membership here, you should cover your runes. (laughs) Noted. Thank you. (laughs) I'd like to make a perception check to sort of size up um, the, like the guards kind of oh. around. Go for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ten. Well, that's a step in the right direction. I rolled four <laughs> times as good as I usually roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking about, they look armored. It's, it's hard to tell their skill level uh, based on just the low light in here. They seem definitely keeping an eye out, but they're also... You can tell they've been working here for a while and they've grown comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, what you do notice, though, is a lot of the servers that are walking around, uh, young men and women dressed in very fine silk uh, robes or gowns, all have these iron bands around their neck, collars, that aren't chained to anything, but it immediately gives you this this mental uh, image of you know slavery mm-hmm. or some sort of servitude. Um, it does not appear that they are actually in some sort of servitude, but the adornments they wear are almost trying to get across that atmosphere as if that's part of what you're paying for. Mm-hmm. It kind of sickens you a little. I'm going to carry myself uh, and kind of like, uh, I'm going to do what I can to give off that, like, I'm keeping an eye on, these, on, on this guy. That, like, I'm the guy. That's sort of like what I'm trying to, sort of, that's how I'm trying to carry myself. Okay. Uh, as you guys have walked to the center of this room now, uh, the dwarf individual that led you in turns around and with a bug bat. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Hosin. I am the manager of this fine establishment, the Velvet Cabaret. I'd like to welcome you, um... Scanlan of the Short Holtz. Scanlan of the Short Holtz? Where do you hail from? I've not heard uh, of We come from Iman. 
I sell shoes. We sell shoes. Yes, uh, Coraline Shortholt. Coraline Shortholt. Yes, pleasure. Very well, very well. Well, you uh, <coughs> have interest in membership, you say? But we do. We were hoping to sample the atmosphere here. Is there entertainment? We heard there was great entertainment well, here. Well, there is quite entertainment here at certain hours, if you like. Well, for now, we have more of an atmospheric presentation. And he kind of looks over, you can see there's a small stage off the corner. Uh, there sits a um, very beautiful elven woman uh, dressed in a, a gold gown that is sleeveless and kind of just hugs to her form very well. You can see kind of shimmers in a little bit of purple fairy light that is hanging above her. And she, she has this gorgeous looking silver harp in front of her and she's just plucking away. Her eyes are closed like she's just caught in the moment. And there's a group of people that are sitting around her just you know, chatting softly, not to be overbearing to the music, but just to be around that atmosphere. Your wonderful employees uh, in, uh, mentioned membership. I'd like to inquire that as well, I, I, I assume. Uh, uh, <clears throat> as well, I mean. You're saying this to, to, to uh, Hosim? Mm -hmm. Yes, this is Thoralaxalux, my financial advisor. Thoralaxalux, at your service. Yes. Mm. Grace, <laughs> make a persuasion roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the deception roll, sorry, deception roll. Uh, what is that? 16? 16? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so, the pleasure is mine, and it's not often you come across elves that have taken the time to learn the tongue of my folk. I know many languages. Well, he's very well well traveled, very well cultured. That's part of why we hired him. I was a bit of a shut in as a child, and all I had were books on languages to read and whatnot, and ventures and what have you. Uh, it, well, if you are seeking membership, you should probably speak with our uh, patron, the owner of this establishment. Uh, he's currently in a meeting, I believe, but. Uh, well. Step with me for a moment, and he kind of leads you to the other side of the room, and you know all these draped kind of orange and uh, gold silks that are constantly kind of getting in your way as you push through, lead you into the, what uh, is a doorway that is covered in these silks. You kind of push into the hallway to the right and left. There's a door across the way. The two doors down the left, and the door at the very end is a really ornate-looking uh, door. A series of locks that are currently unlocked. Um, uh, Hosine walks up to it and knocks gently onto it and takes a listen. Uh, it, it appears that he uh, will be available in just a moment if you'd like to sit tight, and you are more than welcome to speak. Hmm. Um, question, Hosian. Oh, While yes, we wait, you. do you happen to have any wine or ale? <laughs> just while we wait. It's just been such a long travel. But of course. Oh, thank you. You are so kind. So he claps his hands, and you can see one of the servants that you saw kind of walking around uh, with a small tray enters from the side of the hallway. Ah, uh, yes? Posing turns. Uh, the finest wine we have available for the elven lass right here. The servant immediately darts off, kind of averting the eyes. The moment passes as you guys are waiting, returns with uh, three glasses of wine, looking over you two, hands one to each of you, and the servant, kind of still averting the gaze from the guest, smiles, gives a little curtsy, and then darts back into the main room. Uh, which point- Cheers. Cling eyes, 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 It's definitely a velvish blend, which is generally too sweet for your tastes, but for what you were expecting, it's not too bad. It's serviceable. Nowhere near strong enough to really do anything, but uh, it's not water. So as I hand it back to you, I sort of mutter, wine. <laughs> <laughs> Giant dwarven air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> the door to the end of the hallway opens up suddenly, <laughs> And as it does, a, a servant walks out holding a tray that contains a bunch of partially eaten fruits uh, and it looks like m the outer gristle of some sort of cooked meat. And it looks at you all awkwardly and steps past and disappears in the other room. You hear a voice come from the hallway. Enter! I ask you all to enter. If you are to meet me, please, come, sit, be comfortable, welcome. To the Velvet Cabaret. I look to Tall Bear and then look in the room. 
I step into the room. Okay. As you enter, uh, Hosein kind of just lowers his head and offers his arms as the rest of you to acquiesce. Um, stepping into the room, you see, uh, once again, a room that has a, a square or rectangular table in the center that has a series of small platters on it uh, with bits of a previously devoured meal, and there are three small cushions on the ground that you see would act as some sort of sitting arrangement. The opposite side of the room has three large purple cushions, of which there are two uh, women, also servants, that are just kind of laying back comfortably, just resting. And in the center, you see a man, a uh, very dark complexion, uh, kind of ratty looking, uh, crimped dark hair, uh, very well trimmed beard mustache ensemble, and uh, long black and gold robes, very, very long sleeves, and just jewelry adorning every ounce of his hands, his fingers. You can barely see the actual skin beneath. There's just so much jewelry adorning him. He looks up, smiling, with his elbows on the edge of the table. Have a seat. We are to talk, yes? Introduce yourselves. Guests are always welcome, but I wish to know who it is that I'm uh, guesting for. <clears throat> I seat Quaraline and have a seat myself. Thank you, husband. Yes. And pretending to check out the uh, women in the room, I make a perception check. And that is a 16. All right. What are, you, what are you trying to see? Oh, just if anything sets off my alarm bells. They, uh, uh, they seem to just be lounging. There isn't like there's fear in their eyes or they seem to be mistreated per se. They're just almost like they're here for atmosphere. And the room itself? The room itself, uh, most of the walls have a, like a velvety texture to them. They've all been, all the wood has been covered in some sort of material that has a, uh, just kind of adds to this comfortable, almost, everything feels like it's a lounging bedroom. And that's the aesthetic of a lot of the interior of this location. Um, you cannot quite see the source of the light in the room. Uh, it almost feels like there's an, like an indirect lighting uh, accoutrement across the ceiling. Whatever the source of light is, it's covered and being spread across the top, so it gives this kind of dark, uh, intimate feel to the, uh, the this current room, at least. Um, as he gestures out to the rest of you to sit. I fear there are only three seats, but I assume that your uh, accompaniment are accustomed to standing anyway, so do not worry. We are, we are. Very good, very good. Now, you say you come for membership. Membership does not come cheap. Membership does not come to anyone. We uh, have a certain level of clientele we wish to keep because in keeping this, it is easy enough for us to uh, consider it very, how do I say, uh, exquisite. I'm sorry, before we go on, what was your name? Oh. I don't believe I caught it. I did not cut your name either. Oh, I'm sorry, I am Coraline. Coraline Shortholtz. Coraline Shortholtz. Of the Amman Shortholtz. He takes your hand, leans forward, and gives you this kind of ginger kiss to the edge of your fingers. Uh, um, yeah, there, there, there is a, a, a slimy-ish presence, but not too aggressive. Just mm. a very well-trained type of dealing with guests. I kind of subversively like wipe it on my robes. <clears throat> my name is Vince Cianor, and I am the owner of this house of joy and pleasure. I'm the lucky man who married her. My name is Scanlan of the Short Halts. We're in from Iman, and a reputation of this establishment is well known within all parts of the walls. We're looking to possibly become members here. We hear the entertainment is top notch, and we hear that business happens within these walls. But I'm not convinced. I'm hoping we can stay for an hour, see what you have to offer. When I find a like a place, I stay for a long time and leave a lot of money. I just like a little taste. Make a deception check. I can use my last luck of the day. No! <laughs> That's better. Fifteen. Fifteen? Hosim, if you don't mind. And uh, the door closes behind you guys. Well. Scanlan, short halt. What, uh, if I may ask, business do you run that gives you the uh, 
liquid assets to think that you could walk and rub shoulders amongst such astute clientele. You are well dressed, I see, and well versed in conversation, but uh, I have not heard of you before, and I have very acute ears for people of such heritage in this city. <clears throat> we hail from Amman. We're not very flashy. We certainly do much and don't do much in public in Iman. I prefer to make my money and enjoy my money, and I don't believe in ostentation. <laughs> Why have you come to this establishment? I am made of ostentation. For I do not fear what people judge or think here. You do what we like. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy the form of a beautiful woman as much as the next man. But what I hear... Why limit yourself? You said I do. I mean, even this one here, while his uh, appearance may be rough, I'm certain under certain circumstances he could be uh, persuaded to prove his weight in more than golden weaponry. Mr. Sienor, I think it is best you do not make presumptions on our relationship and dealings. My wife and I are businessmen. And what we hear is that this is where business happens. Business does happen here, yes. Quite a bit of interesting business. And we are very interested in all of those interesting businesses. From what I hear, as my assistant has told me, your business is shoes. Hmm. Tell me, why would the business of shoes require such a uh, ostentatious location for business? The shoes are the public face, but the well runs deep. We get to the uh, meat of the matter, eh? So, shoes is but uh, an appearance. What is your business aside from cobbling, Mr. Shortheart? I know my way around poison. And I hear you have the rarest of breeds here. I have come to spend some money to satisfy my clients. Make a deception check. <coughs> Fifteen again. Was it? Fifteen again. Poisons. So you supply to, uh, what? King killers? You supply to, uh, Cell sorts, you apply them to your own weapons? You realize this city is very, very tight and when it comes to those sort of industries. Although I know you would think possibly to find it here, I guarantee you what we deal with here has nothing to do with the slitting of throats. I'm not looking to sell. I'm looking to buy. I will tell you one thing that I'm interested in buying. I'm interested in buying information. I'm interested in buying loyalty. I'm interested in buying trust. Since you've walked into this room, there has been an air of something not right about you. And through this conversation, I've come to believe that perhaps you're not telling me the truth. <laughs> now, I will ask of you at this moment, whoever you may be, short halts or not, but this entire facility is very well paid to make sure that, should you try anything funny, you won't get but two steps before the heads leave your shoulders. So let's be frank here. Who are you? Why are you here? Mr. Vince, let's not play coy. I am sure you have dealt with many a powerful client in your day. And I am sure it is not unfamiliar to you that many powerful clients have many deep secrets. As she finishes that, I dispel auto self. Okay, as you, your actual <laughs> dragonborn appearance restores itself, he sits back. My apologies. I am Tiberius Stormwind. Stormwind. And I, and I do, yes, wind. Never get it right. <laughs> I merely dispelled this to show you that 
Only your trust is in our best interest. I do not wish to deceive. Well, then perhaps you should have walked in this form when you first arrived. You see, many people will take kindly to a red dragonborn, by the way. I just thought it was best. We're in a new town, and I, it was standard protocol whenever we visit a new town. My apologies. Well, one person has come clean. What about this one? What is your business here? My business here is the same as theirs. We're here in the long run to help you. What is to help me? You have not told me what your business is. We're here to stop a murderer. Explain. Bodies have been showing up outside this building. Multiple bodies. I'm not going to get into the details, but we've been sent here to stop that from happening any further. We're fairly sure you know of this. Look at this guy. Does he look like he's fucking around? He winks at him. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, the, the, the force of the wink itself is, is intense enough at the point where he physically shudders and kind of leans back a few inches. <laughs> now, you must be aware of this problem. Can't be a surprise to you. People are starting to take notice in this city. This was inevitable. Do you still have Lord Tyrell's possessions? This is about Lord Tyrell. That's Amongst others? Force. We do have his possessions. Uh, they have been investigated. Their establishment has already been investigated. The bastions were very thorough, and we have been found absolved of any sort of involvement We are with not bastions. And we are not here to accuse, and we are not here to investigate your establishment. It's interesting. You come in here and lie. It sounds to me exactly what you're doing. Now, are you coming to ask questions? To see what involvement we have? Answers? We've already told everything to anyone else. We have no informant. I don't know what you're talking about. This is ridiculous. And I may have to ask you to leave. He's shutting check. down. Someone do something, inside quick. Inside check, inside <laughs> check. Uh, balls. Uh, can I do also... I will also make an insight check. Yes. Can I do that as well? It's <laughs> <laughs> not. Again? <laughs> <laughs> We're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes my ten look Titanic. Uh, I'm here to make you look good. That's what Torbeard does. <laughs> okay. Did you do a Nineteen. Two. two. Oh, okay. No, I rolled a two. It's still good. Please, come on. You're going it's up! Two. It's... It's not impressive. Like, like that's <laughs> mythic. Statistically unlikely. That's I the mean, thing. It is. You're beating math. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've been beating math Genius. for 20 years. Genius. Yep, I'm very good. Yeah. You're, you're, you're the singularity that ruins the law. <laughs> uh, somewhere in the world, there's a person who never rolls under 17, and I was placed on this planet to balance them out <laughs> to save you all. <laughs> To prevent you are the black hole at the center of our planet from collapsing <laughs> and taking yeah. us all with it, the you're Indian welcome. <laughs> she's she's in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, as you all kind of take this moment to yourself, it's hard to read. It seems like he's very thorough and, and offended by the circumstance. Uh, you glean that there is a nervousness and there are uh, droplets of sweat across his brow and his. His briskness does show a bit of fear in his eyes. Mm. About this time, I go, whoosh, and I cast oh, like uh, my wind spell, and I slam the doors behind us, and I slam the shutters, and I turn out all the lights. If there's any, did you say there was like candlelight, or did you say there was like weird indirect uh, lighting? You didn't, yeah, indirect lighting, you didn't quite know where the source was coming from. Uh, the door was already closed behind you. Uh, Hosein closed it, but as, you, as the wind <laughs> comes out, all the silks <laughs> blow against the wall. Uh, pillows are locked to the sides. Both of the women in there are kind of <laughs> and pull back against the walls, trying to keep out of the circumstance. And you can see uh, uh, Vince has begun to stand up, and his like his hair blown back. What is the meaning of this? No. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I I sometimes get a little out of control. But remain calm, all right? Jesus, remain no, calm. No, you calm down. I'm stopped up. Sorry. I'm trying to remain calm too. Doing a great job. Thank you! This. Okay. Persuasion check. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, who's in this room? Oh. It's the women, it's the. It's two women and, and uh, Vince. Vince. Uh, uh, 
uh, Hosim is was closed the door and left in the hallway. And Vince is uh, the owner of the. But is he human? He's, he's human. human. He's human. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna approach him and I'm gonna cast Mage Hand, like, and I'm gonna have it float right right in front of me, and I'm like, now, you better start cooperating, because it seems to me that you're getting very nervous, and we don't want to do anything, and nor do we want to leave. All we want is information. I guess we want to know what you want to know too. We want a lot of information. So start talking. And start acting like a fool. Make an intimidation check. He's sometimes hard to follow, though. You don't want to follow him. 15. As you do, between you standing, he was kind of in the process of standing up, and you see he was kind of reaching for something under one of the cushions. Um, as you do that, uh, he kind of glances about the room, looks over to you specifically as well, and back to the dragonborn, the dwarf. And I say, and whatever weapon you are about to brandish, you best wise to leave it be. You realize, you realize you may have just alerted pretty much the entirety of my guard in this establishment that we're descending on this room soon. And you realize that this is only because of your doing. He sits down on the cushion again. And uh, Torber looks at him and goes, okay, and pulls his great axe out and, and leans on his great axe. I disperse the magic hand. I say, now. And I sit on a pillow. <laughs> Our quarrel is not with you. We are not with the guard. We are not with the bastions. More calm, more calm, more calm. Yeah, still doing a great job with the conflict. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm sorry. It's okay. Sorry. I get emotional. I got it. Yeah. I'm trying to remain calm here, okay? What do you wish to know? Once again, do you still have Lord Tyrell's possessions? His possessions are not under my keeping, no. There we go. Thank you. Where are they? <laughs> I have no idea. I want to do a perception check. Is the inside, yeah. Inside check, sir. Nice. Ooh. Nice. Where are we? Oh, wow. 26. 26. What's that like? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's 29 of your rolls, strangely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Looking look at the intense, and, and he says that uh, he's fumbling lie after lie right now. It's just you, you get easy to tell. Yeah, for yeah. you especially. You're yeah, like, okay. oh, this. Like all the signs are there, the quivering to his voice, his eyes darting from person to person. He's still covering. Okay, you're you're sitting in a room now with a whole bunch of people that want to hurt you. So it's obvious that you're lying. What do you know? Or this guy and this guy are gonna drag in and axe you. The, look, I, I. What happened was unfortunate. There is, there are things beyond your understanding or control involved here. Oh, I don't know. We can understand a lot. We fought a beholder before. Just do not take us for fools who just walked in here without a clue. Mm. I walk forward, I pull out Dagger of Venom, and I drop a little bead of black down the blade, and I hold it just about a centimeter under his neck. I've all run out of patience, friend. We're here to help this city, and you're going to help us. Talk. Make an intimidation check with advantage because of this whole setup here. Dear God, so many. Come on. Uh, 20. Whole conversation. <laughs> You'll kill me if I say anything. We're going to kill you now. <laughs> now or later, friend. And we could protect you from them. Oh, it. This, this establishment, I'm not the owner. I'm a figurehead. Something else currently runs postal strings from behind. Something else? As we said, it. Like. It kind of looks Where's off it? past you, just over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Perception check. You're oh, always son of a bitch. 15, uh, 20, uh, uh, 23. Yeah. You glance over your shoulder briefly, and at this point you can see the door is partially ajar. And you can see in a little bit of light there is a dwarven face staring through the passage. That then slams the door shut quickly, and you hear footsteps. Oh, great. Was, right. that, was, was that, that Hosen? Hosen? That was Hosen, yeah. Well, Fucking thanks, Hosen. Hosen! Thanks a lot, Hoser! 
<laughs> and he's shaking his head now with the blade there, as you hear the, the, the feet running off now. I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going something tiny and fast. What's tiny and fast? Nice I'm, rat. I'm going rat. Carrot. A fly. Okay. And I'm, and I'm going after Hojin. Nice. Uh, you guys watch as Keila all of a sudden grasps the side of her armor and then her form sh shrinks down to a tiny rat, then darts underneath. Um, I'm gonna bop oh. this guy in the head. I'm gonna just flip the blade and strike him across the forehead. Okay. Uh, as I as I see her do this, I open the the, the, the scroll when the scroll she's giving. I do polymorph for myself and I turn myself into a gadfly and follow. Okay. Yes, the scroll right. is consumed and gone. You just turn to a fly and follow as well. Two of your party members just shrunk and vanished and went off as creatures. You go ahead and roll for an attack. Okay. So on a surprise, it's advantage. Mm -hmm. So, oh, 19's pretty good. Nine, I'll take the 19 over the 2. Alrighty. So that's 19 plus uh, no, 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 30. No, 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 19, 30. That hits, go ahead and roll sneak attack damage on that. Okay, sneak attack damage. This is subdual. Is this a surprise because he didn't know it's coming, or it it's is, not? Yes. It is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, so, because of the my assassinate uh, feat, then this is a critical, critical? hit. Yeah. Alright. So, just the sneak attack damage? <laughs> okay, 4, 8. 10, 12, 15, 21, 42. 42. 42, yeah, you whack, he's out. It's like a light, just dish, lights off, face on the pillow. The two women ah, squeal in reaction. You guys, uh, uh, as you rush into the door, what are you guys doing? Uh, I I'm wanna, leaning over to see what he was reaching for. Uh, as you glance over, you can see what uh, appears to be a small jeweled blade that is hidden underneath uh, one of the cushions there. It's a curved dagger that comes to a gradual point. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take that. Okay, so write down jeweled, jeweled dagger in your uh, equipment. I wanna search him. I wanna see if he has anything on him in his pockets, anything. Okay. Um, as you uh, are going through his body, you guys have rushed beneath, and as you can see, the, uh, the dwarf, Ho Hosim, is kind of walking down the hallway Really quickly, kind of with his robes over. Can him. I get? Can I, as a gadfly, can I zzz, in front of him? Uh, you pull underneath because you had to go underneath the door mm -hmm. to make it into the hallway. Yeah. You see him; he's about twenty, uh, about fifteen feet away. And as he's walking, he's looking about very nervously. You can see one of the guards is kind of approaching, and he kind of looks back over and sees. Can the, I, uh, the can, rat screen uh, in the hallway? How far away is he from me? Uh, he's about twenty feet. How far away is the guard in front of him? Uh, well, the the guard. Can you know what? Let me go ahead and pull this up. It'll be a good. Indicator of the circumstance here. He does what? <laughs> oh god, we have a map. Gentlemen, we need to move. <laughs> okay, so he's right there. Mama Cass, what have you found? All right, you guys so are currently right. inspecting him oh, at the moment. Oh, you guys are rushing oh, through. Um, so. I'm within 20 feet of him, whatever? Uh, you are, I should know, he'd be back here, yeah, he's just rushing past, so he's 20, 20, 25 feet from you. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, get a Dispel a Polymorph, and I'm gonna cast Silence in front of him. And I'm gonna silence him. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so you, you using him as the, as the, the source? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you, as you unpolymorph, uh, he looks over his shoulder and sees you take his form. Um, you go ahead and cast Silence, which has an opposition. It's a, what level spell is that? Second level? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay, cool. So, it creates a sphere of, of, of a, a 20 foot radius of Silence here. Mm -hmm. So he just goes and he does like a hand motion. Nothing happens. Frustrated, he continues to run. Uh, okay. Roll. I have you guys roll initiative. Fucking shit. Cash. Help. <laughs> <coughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. Sorry. Uh, what is that? Seventeen. 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 Yeah. All right. Um, so you guys will both be going first, but before we finish that, as you guys are searching the body, you hear all of a sudden the sound of some sort of a scuffle, a, a flash of some sort of energy in the hallway that's muffled between the doorway, and footsteps also happening. So there's some sort of 
as you're just starting to get through his pockets, you start hearing some sort of a scuffle outside of the room. I'm gone. Okay. Yeah, me too. So have you guys roll initiative as well? <laughs> Four. I don't, I don't even know. All right. Is Not it a six or a nine? Nine. That's a nine uh, or six. And that is a like, nine. That's a nine, all right. Plus your Theoretically. So, hello. Hello. Only when it counts is what it is. Okay. Well, right, I know, but there's 20 faces on this. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, look, right? Yes, he just like, rolled a 20 when I mean, it, it didn't can, matter. It can happen. I know that it's possible. Mm. I've done it in my all life. Right, so, um, so as you guys are, t- are turning, we'll, we'll get to your turn in a moment. Uh, Tiberius, Keyleth, you're up first. Yes. <laughs> are we at the same time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess I'll go ahead and cast out of my, my B shape as well and cast Hold Person on him as he's running away. Cool. Okay, cool. Is he staying where you are? Are you going to move? Are you going to stay there or are you going to move? Well, he's right there, right? Right there, yeah. So I'm just going right, to try so to hold him. You go ahead and cast Hold Person. Um, as the spell releases, you can see kind of the, the uh, mystical, kind of shimmering cage that seems to encapsulate. Uh, seems to shrug it off. Because he's no, not a person! Right. He's not a person. I should have fucking done grasping vine. That's fine. God damn it. That's fine. Right. Okay. Oh, you want to move or are you staying where you are? Yeah, I'll follow after his ass. All no, right. You following. can get up to pretty much right adjacent to him if you want. Fine. All right, Tiberius? Bring it. Uh, I'm going to uh, cast telekinesis and grab him that way. Okay. So from where you are, you go ahead and you create your, your telekinetic force. You rush out and the telekinetic force seems to have no effect on the dwarf's form. It's the Rakshasa! It does him! Uh, uh, no! No! I yell you, don't chase him! I, I stay, I go. There we and are. I go, what? I, come back! Come back! Which you don't hear. Because you're. The rock, what? Yeah, I'm in the silent bubble. Yeah, there is currently no sound coming from the center of that area. She can hear me. She can hear you. And I'm not that far. You heard me! The other way! The other way! <laughs> and and I move uh, in the room with these guys. Okay. As you guys turn, you see Tiberius comes rushing into the room. <laughs> there was something! This was... Nothing worked on him! And I think that's not normal! You're speaking Draconian! Yeah. You're speaking Draconian! Yeah. Sorry! 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 sorry. What's happening? Rakshasa! I believe the dwarf is the Rakshasa. I, I cast many things. I kill this and nothing hit him. And, and I silenced him, uh, so we didn't... Really... You left her with him? No, she, well, I mean, I'm sure she I shoved past him and just <laughs> out the door. Okay. Uh, at this point... You ran time, away uh, from the target? <laughs> <laughs> at this point, Hosim... So I stomp past him in my dwarvy stomps. Right. Uh, Hosim gets just out of the sphere of silence, and then angrily does a motion with the hand, and then... No! Oh, <laughs> Uh, that'll bring us next to, uh... Hey, All right. Fuck. Uh, Brother Cash. Cashin, what do you want to do? Cash I want to go back eight moves and catch the thing. <laughs> um, I think, well, what we're going to have to do now is, uh... Bastard! He's got to be in the area. Wait! Find out where he is. Let's locate Creature again, if we can. I drop well, to my feet. Well, Okay, well, this, this is during your turn. Uh, yeah. Uh, is there go. anything you want to do? Yes. Can, we, can, we, can we locate Creature? See how close uh, he is? How, how long does it take to cast Locate Creature? I believe it is uh, one action. Okay, so you can do that. Okay. Um, so you, you mark that off as a, as a as another casting of that spell. Okay. Um, it, as, as, as you kind of rush out into the hallway and see that it's vanishing and you cast the spell for a second, you can see the direction of the creature is roughly ahead of you, and you also see a door on the opposite side, this right-hand door. Okay. Open and close. Right. He just goes invisible. Yes. So he's not teleporting. He's just invisible. He's that's, just, a, that's a big, that's a big thing. Yeah, he's here. He's still here. He's just we can't see him. Uh, you still have uh, fifteen feet of movement if you want to move forward. Yeah, I would like to move forward. Okay, so you'll get to that point with your turn, uh, and you've you've kind of gathered that that's the direction of him, and that that you you know that's where it's going. I know where it's going. Okay, so we saw the sh- we saw the door shut. That's where he is. Let's go. Don't run blindly in there. Hold on. Yes, 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 yes. Max, you're up. I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna. I'm gonna run just up past Keyleth. I'm gonna look at her as I pass. Not bad. Keep going and stop there. And I'm gonna try to sense traps. At this point, there. Yeah. Oh, you, can use, <coughs> oh, okay. So you can get up to here if you're gonna use an action as well. So. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
As you go to talk to her? Yes. Uh, no words come out. Can I see what's going on? Uh, no, you're in the other room still. Uh, uh, everyone just kind of dart out, and you're like, uh, as, as you're making a route. So, uh, go make a perception check. Okay. 21. 21. Uh, glancing about the room, there doesn't appear to be anything that catches you as a trap. This hallway is fairly often traversed by the clientele of this establishment, and uh, nothing seems dangerous. <laughs> that would be a difficult thing to put in the middle of a place and still run a business. Okay. Uh, I look at uh, Cash and Keyleth and say, All right, then Are we out of initiative? We're still in initiative. Uh, we're still in initiative. Okay. Currently, for the moment, just, just the sake of sure. our pace on this. All right. I'm going uh, as far as I can down the hall toward the direction of the bad guy. Okay. That gets you to about there. Cool, that ends that turn. At which point, three of the bouncers then mm. start pushing through the silks. Uh, one of them pushes this way here, this one kind of pushes aside, and they come out, weapons drawn, seeing all, all of you there, and one of them goes, oh, Man. Um, they're, that's their turn, but it looks like they're ready to jump into some sort of combat circumstance. Uh, that brings us to the top of the, com of the round. Tiberius, you're up. Where, where did you see the guards came from? Uh, they came from from the main room. There were oh, the silks the are that kind of separate the hallway from from the main area, and you start hearing people shouting and uh, some slight yelps and screams from the other room. Okay. People that seem freaked out by the sudden what, rise in energy. What was that guy's name? Lohan. Hosim. 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 Oh, uh, okay. The dwarf is Hosim. The Hosim. other guy silence. is Vince. Uh, 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 just in my head, I just disperse silence anyway. Okay. Um, and uh, before I go out, I turn into Hosim. Alter self. Okay, so use your action to cast to cast alter self. You you take Hosim's form. Go. You step out, closing the door behind you. Uh, how did he sound again? <laughs> how did he sound? I don't know. He's a he was, he was, he was, he was Scottish. He was Scottish. Oh, Scottish, 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 Scottish but fancy. fancy. Scottish 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 He's wearing makeup. Yeah. He's glam rock. Oh, glam rock. Oh, right, right, right. What's all this noise out here? What are you bothering my friends for? Guards. The guards can look over confused and. Uh, we, we heard that there was uh, Everything's a fine. So friends, get on with your business. Get back on patrol. Make sure nothing happens. Or I'll have your heads. Take a exception check. Oh, come on, Tiberius. 28. The guards kind of look at each other. Uh, all right, but if, if anything happens again and there's a problem, let us know. We'll, we'll be at the ready. Of course. They sheathe their weapons and kind of look untrustingly to the rest of your group with your weapons currently drawn and step cool, back I'll to the get side. out, get out. They disappear back into the main room and they start calming down some of the other patrons who are starting to peek around them, trying to see what's going on, the action. Some look smiling and curious to see what's happening and they're like, go back to tables, it's fine, there's no problem. And they disperse the, uh, the energy. Nice. Not bad, Tiberius. Oh, with that, I just kind of continue with the charade and loop my arm around Vax and say, mm. shall we go into that room? Just a moment, dear. I okay. Pull out the same it. poison blade and start walking down that hole a little further and want to see if I sense any traps further ahead. Okay, to about there. Yeah. Make a perception check. Natural 20. Oh. Looking about, um... <laughs> and balance was restored to the universe. Um, Go, God, don't do that! Come on! Keep it away. <laughs> Watch as the dice just, like, turns to dust. <laughs> no! uh, it's the end of Raiders. <laughs> exactly. Um... You glance about the room as you're walking forward carefully, looking at the floorboards, looking at the, the tapestries and the walls, maybe looking for anything that'd be out of sorts, and your eyes very keen to finding anything out of the ordinary. Uh, the room, thankfully, does not appear to have anything specifically trapped. It seems fairly safe. Ooh. Ooh, okay. And those are doors up there? Yeah, door to would the right, door to the Would check include the doors themselves? Uh, I would say with the National 20, yes. The yeah. doors both also seem to be functional doors, not designed with any sort of trap attached. All right, uh, pressing my ear to the door on my left. There. Listen to it. Perception roll. So many. I know. Four. Six. 
Six. Shouldn't it seems fairly quiet? Hear my dice. If, mm. if, if we stop pursuing, does that take us out of initiative? You guys are not. You guys are not in, currently in initiative. Oh, you're not in the thick of battle. But you, you've managed to, to disperse the conflict. I'm gonna so. do it at the other door as well. All right. You step through <laughs> the door. You guys want to do anything else? Why are you just waiting on him? Yes. Uh, I'm just gonna come. I'm. I want to get as close to him as I can, and I'm ready for a fight. Yeah, Me too. I, I follow. Same. Torbjorn. All right. Torbjorn, do you have an extra sword or arm on you? Perhaps a short Another sword. Perception. Any of you. I give him the jeweled dagger. That one's a 19, no, 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 19. Thank you. 19. I appreciate uh, it. Listening, you hear what sounds like a slight <laughs> sound, some sort of a scooting of wood on wood, Up. and in silence. Kicking the door, hard as I can. Okay, make a strength roll. Both of these straight, straight strength. Uh, oh, wait, that's the wrong guy. 12, uh, 14. That? As he's doing that, I'm gonna drink a potion of uh, of frost giant strength. Okay. Oh! You wham! Slam your foot into the door. <laughs> oh, that was the foot that you just got healed. Oh, oh that's gonna bruise. <laughs> that's gonna oh, bruise. Uh, Keyleth, uh, Quarreline, darling, could you yes. come up here, please? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, or, or, Did you stub your toe, darling? Sorry. Yeah. Um. I think I want to get this door open quickly, please. I'm gonna hit the door with my axe. Okay, go for a roll. Oh! One! What'd you roll? One! 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 No way! This is amazing! This is a lie! I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something here. If it here. wasn't live, I'm gonna no one would believe it. I'm gonna do something here. I rolled a one. Because I'm... it is, it because it is what I do. <laughs> I'm gonna test this theory. I'm gonna trade you. Oh, okay. For now. Yeah. Oh. And I'm just gonna leave you with oh. that dice oh. and see if it... If it transfers? Any impact whatsoever. The, um, <laughs> you have to throw it into the fire, Mr. <laughs> Frodo! <laughs> <laughs> the curse doesn't care about which die is rolled. Which is very possible, but there needs to be well, like some sort Okay, of it's like science class. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Maybe because that dice was in the vicinity of Matt's hair, you'll be good. So much fun. <laughs> was such a... <laughs> All right. Uh, 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 that's awesome. So, uh, how much uh, so, how much damage do I take for some reason? <laughs> as you pull back the axe, you actually swing wildly backward, nearly hitting Vax in the process. You right. have to dodge out of the way as the axe <laughs> poof, embeds itself into the wood behind you. <laughs> uh, again, axe is stuck. Uh, uh, I kind of slap sure myself is. in the forehead and go, uh, pull out thieves. A pick. Okay. Start you, on the you lock. And uh, as you do, you feel your throat seize suddenly as the cold liquid tends to freeze up what is normally a very warm and very fire, you know, breeding interior to your throat. And it thaws slowly, and as you exhale, you can see the mist. And suddenly your muscles begin to pulse with energy, and you feel like your physical form is embodied strength far more than you've ever felt within your body before. With his jeweled dagger, I take out my dagger. Uh, okay. I, I feel great. The fresh maker. <laughs> There's now the angriest dwarf <laughs> right now clutching two daggers as you get down with your thief tools. Yeah, let's try this again. That's better. Oh, that's a 24. Come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, you. The door swings open without issue. It's one of the easier jobs you've had. Should have done that in the first place. Yeah. You, um, <laughs> Should have beat it down. Ninth, uh, ninth time's the charm. You push open the door and find your way into what looks to be a very well-adorned bedroom. Um, there is uh, a small table on the side, but there are some books stacked up. There's a dresser in the far end that's closed. There is a canopy bed <laughs> set up. There is a small end table on the side, and the rest of the room just has a nice, uh, kind of a, a circular rug that's thrown across the center and uh, there are no windows currently to this. this Turn my head to everyone and just mouth the words. And perception check the room. Can I perception check as well? 24. Can I just Ooh, look yeah. to see, I want to just kind of meditate. What did you just roll, 24? 24. I want to see if I see any like movements or just like brushes of cloth or anything like that. Okay. Uh, 19. 19. Not as good as fast. No, 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 19. 
Uh, how long does it take me to pull the axe out of the wall, and how, how far into Yakety Sax does the soundtrack get? <laughs> up there, and you know, just with the foot, and <laughs> jumping <laughs> on it, and trying to pull it down. And we're, we're currently hitting like the, the, the one minute, 15 second mark. Okay, great, um, sure. I haven't quite pulled it out of the wood yet. <laughs> okay, good. <That's, laughs> and my little legs are kicking underneath me while I pull it down. I'm cursing in Dwarven. They call me Ben. Benny. <laughs> Benny Hill. <laughs> uh, do you wish to enter the room? Uh, I don't, actually. I wish to, because of all the sound, I wish to, you know, turn my back to the room and guard the hallway while everybody else is inside checking okay, out. Okay, so you're keeping an eye out. And you do see that there's, like, kind of one of the guards just to the cell, so she's just kind of keeping an eye, looking over carefully. Okay. Um, you guys make a perception check. Looking around the room, you see there is no movement. Uh, there are no curtains on the walls. There is the rug, and most everything else in here seems to be perfectly still. Um, you catch what looks like a little bit of movement of the canopy bed, the material that's on top. There's a slight sway to it that comes to stillness that you just barely catch with your keen half-elven eye. Uh, <laughs> I would like to run up the bed and stab up both hands, clicking the boots of haste. Okay. Bam, clicks the, click the boost of haste. You run and charge up into the bed and stab upward into the canopy. The material is torn asunder. This very fine and probably imported silk is carved into three separate ribbons and falls gently onto the cushion of the bed proper, revealing the hardwood ceiling above you. I'm gonna check the ceiling. Okay. It's a lot of perception. Uh, I'm all out of luck. Yep. Yeah, that's no good. That's a, well, that's a 14. 14, looking about solid wood, you can move your fingers along, and you're standing on the bed, you can just get it within reach and feeling along the board. It's all pretty solid. I'm gonna kind of like make myself like kind of, you know, soccer field goalie this stuff in with the door, like in okay. the door frame, and do another like just really trying to see if I see any brush of dust or movement. Okay. You keep it on out. You pull your axe free. <laughs> Into the hallway of door in front of you, the wall. You, this one though, not with all the strikes, you pull yeah. it out and kind of try as best you can to save some grace. Well done. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I motion. got this. Oh, yeah, I was graceful. I motion Tiberius over. Should I do a perception on that? Yeah. Yep. That ceiling looks pretty solid. Can I uh, turn, you know, sitting my back to the door, I turn over? I do a perception check and then go for it. You kind of you step over. You glance past Keyleth. Oh my God! One. <clears throat> um, I got a two. By the way. You look yeah. over and for Five. A, for a split second, you're stop trying to steal my thing. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. You so glance over thing. and you're more distracted Sorry. by the fact that Keyleth is doing this awkward field goal thing to the door to <laughs> you for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> together. What the hell are you doing? And you forget what you're in the middle of doing. I'm trying to uh, make myself. There appears right. to be no exit from the <sighs> ceiling. Can board. I? May I enter the room? You may. You push past the con the confused cleric okay, and so even I, more So I look around, I look at the rug, mm -hmm. I sigh heavily, and I pull the rug. Pull the rug. <laughs> Revealing a wooden floor. <laughs> Plain slash. You thought that was going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point, too? <laughs> of elves or half elves before, but this one's really starting to dig <laughs> into you a little. That's some sass. Great. I'll make a perception check because we could total up all my rolls and I'd have five. <laughs> come on, come on. Hey, oh, hey. Um, that's actually better. Uh, Twenty. Twenty. Hey, hey. Oh, you pull the rug back. There's nothing there, and you kind of look about at the rest of the folks with a heavy sigh. But the rug was on the right track. Everyone was keeping high. Looking beneath the bed, uh, you can see what looks to be in the shadow some little bit of elevated wood that catches your attention. Um, uh, he's, I just, I, it, under the bed! <sighs> oh, I'll, I'll motion over there. Uh, I am, well, we're not silenced, right? So I'm no. yank, I'm yanking off any fancy clothes I have on, and I'm pulling uh, my cloak of elven kind out. And I'm just putting it over, okay. and I just oh. sort of spider under the bed. 
And check right. it for traps. I'm I pick up his clothes and I put them in the bag of holding. Okay. Oh my god, she's folding the clothes. We're in the middle of this, she's folding the clothes. I just, we, we, they might come in handy use Unbelievable. later. Unbelievable. Uh, 25 for looking for traps. Okay. Uh, well, it's a good thing you roll high enough perception because as you spider underneath, your first hand goes and then goes underneath and you nearly tumble and you catch yourself. There is a five foot wide hole in the ground right beneath this bed. And as you catch yourself, you can feel a little bit of wind just slowly drifting up from underneath. There's some sort of an airflow coming from underneath this bed where this hole is, and you feel over and you can see that little bit of wood that you saw peeking forward is the top of a makeshift ladder that is currently fastened to the side of this tunnel that disappears beneath the room. Is there dim light down there? It is pitch black. Pitch black. You can see with the dim light from your low light vision a little ways into it, about, I'd say, 20 or so feet from the angle you're at, because you're not looking directly in. Mm -hmm. And even just glancing over the side, it continues down for quite a while. And it's big enough to fit all of us if we wanted to go up. Independently, yes. One person would go down every single file, of course, because right. it's, a, it's, a, it's a tight tunnel. Only one way to go. I'll go. You can see in pitch black, right? Uh, I have uh, dark vision, sixty feet. Is that dim or dark? Uh, dark. Dark. dark, dark vision. Uh, you awesome. can you can see in within a short distance of, of pitch black, and then a larger distance of low light. So yeah. Badass, man. I'll go. All right. So we'll put an order here. Who's going down next? All right. <clears throat> and after uh, after Vax. I'll follow my husband. Keyleth, that's weird. Tiberius? Um, uh, before we go down, I'm going to take <laughs> off my uh, outer. Uh, no, I can't take off it. Nope, I can't take everything because that's all my gear. Never mind. Uh, I don't do that. But um, before we go down, I cast Stone Skin on myself. Okay. Well, I'll cast it right now. Okay. Um, so your form shimmers for a second, and, and you see, you notice this too, uh, uh, Kachok. His scales almost seem to protrude into earthy spikes and then form and solidify, almost like his body becomes its own suit of armor. It's okay, that's cool. Even though <laughs> I'm still a dwarf, though. And are you holding? You're coming up. There? I'm gonna go, but I'm gonna cast a freedom of movement on myself before I go down there. Okay. As you do, you feel even with the encumbrance of the armor you're wearing, uh, you feel like your form is a little more nimble, agile, and you're ready for anything that might try and stop your passage. You guys begin making your way down uh, with uh, with Torbeer uh, leading the way. You descend for a good three to four minutes. You gather probably a good hundred feet or more down. Oh my wrong, and there are a few that you reach that are a little rickety. But a hundred feet down, one hits your foot and <laughs> snaps. But you manage to catch yourself on it, but you get the feeling this ladder uh, is probably not meant to hold someone of your heavy physical form. Largess. Large yes. <laughs> Thank you. You could use, yes. Yes. Um, one by one, you make your way down until eventually you're f you begin to see towards the edge of your, your dark vision um, floor finally begins to appear and, ri and rise towards you. You step off the ladder into what appears to be a small uh, circular area that leads into another 10 foot by 10 foot tunnel, or by 10 by 15 foot up, and uh, continues forward. This is very natural carved earth. It's not smooth stone. It just looks like a tunnel that was mined out of the floor. Is it still dark? It is still dark. There is no light source currently. And you all eventually make your way down. Is there anything loose down there that I can grab a hold of a rock? Anything you can't along? see anything. So you, you can't. Mr. Human, you are in pitch black darkness. Well, that's why I'm wondering if, uh, you know, I feel around underneath me to try to find some kind. Do I find a loose stone? Do I find a pebble? Can I find anything to grab? Can I reach down? Yeah, the, you, you managed to find a couple of small stones. Oh, he's milling about it. light. That's what I was going to do, but he beat me to it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you reach down and you. No, are you kidding? You, you find a stone, you pick it up, you begrudgingly grab your holy symbol, and as you begin to recite your. Cantrip incantation, <laughs> a flash of white light oh! beaming off the top of the dragonborn sorcerer's staff. A little dagger. Help. Off the dagger. Because I have two daggers in my hand. That's now. true. <laughs> one of the daggers is now glowing, the jeweled one. Twice as pretty when it's emanating torchlight. Nice. Um, you now can see the... Thanks for the warning, by the way. Sorry, I usually just do it when it's dark. This Not tunnel goes in one, just one direction. One direction. No. I'm so walking by the toe. Okay. So we'll say four... Sake of marching order. Who all is going in after Torbeer? I'll go next. What order? All right, following Torbeer. I'll go behind Cash. All right. I don't need this at all, but I just wanted to play with it. Hey, no worries. <laughs> That's me right there. <laughs> 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 the <bear's laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll follow, uh, actually, I'll keep uh, uh, on Torbeer's uh, six. Okay. 
About, uh, I'll, I'll stay 15 feet behind him. 15 feet behind? Alrighty. And kill if you continue it that way. Alright, so that'll be the marching order. So I've got my axe out. Mm-hmm. And uh, may I make a perception check to see what I see? To, to, uh, just to see if I can pick up footprints or motion Certainly. or whatever. <laughs> so th- this would be more of a tracking if you're looking for footprints. So that'd be wisdom. Uh, okay. Oh. So, survival. just a straight good. wisdom. The survival, if you're, uh, if you're survival. Well, hang on. Not my system. Um, <laughs> eight. Eight. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's hard to tell. It looks like the, this area is not heavily traversed, and what little bit of sign of footprints there are scattered enough uh, that you, it's hard to make out a specific print. Um, but I mean, they have been traveled before. I'm looking over Torbeer's head and looking for traps as he walks All right. behind. Uh, 22. 22, all right. Uh, you, as you guys are walking forward and going through this, you get about 40 feet forward before you catch that there is a slight divot, a small drop in the dirt, and one looks like a section of uh, intentionally placed plate of some kind, like a terracotta Wait, plate. Take- uh, I'm going to go up to the edge of it and try to inspect it, see okay. if I can find a trigger or uh, see how it works. Okay. Uh, six. And that's, what is that, perception? Are you, are, you, are you checking to see how it works? I want to see if I can dis- uh, see... To, di- to disarm it? Yeah. Okay, that would be with your thieves tools. So uh, thieves th- tools. this would be a dexterity plus that's your thieves tools. So that's, <coughs> that's a 19. 19? Yes. Okay. As you go to the plate, you stop and look up to the walls to the side, and to each side of the wall you can see these tiny little holes, these little kind of quarter-sized, gold piece sized uh, tunnels bored multiple places on both sides of this wall. That's... And uh, you take the plate, you realize this is a pressure plate based trap, and you, taking one dagger, you slightly lift it, the second one you eventually find beneath where the trigger apparatus is, and you gingerly cut each part of these kind of spring-loaded triggers until eventually the plate rises more and more and more and you remove the last bit. The plate tips over and the uh, trap itself is disarmed. Woo! Nice work. Well done, Rogue. I mean, well done, Rogue. It's kind of what I do. So I keep I keep going down. All right. I I want to, I would, I would like to, I want to hit a thing. <laughs> All righty. That's not a wall. <laughs> <laughs> and there is that. All right. Um, pushing forward, uh, continuing for another 30, 40 feet. You want to Again. check out? Okay. Uh, 12. 12? Okay. Uh, pushing forward for a period of time. There doesn't appear to be any change. There are no more divots. You're keeping a very close eye for the, uh, for the traps. And as you're walking forward with your axe, as you're stepping forward, you get this weird tickle across your nose, like a spider web of some kind that catches you, and you kind of instantly reach up and brush it away from your nose. As your finger presses against it, it's much sturdier than a spider web. It's a metallic wire. And as you push away, tink! You hear that slight noise. Tiberius, behind you, you hear a grinding of stone. Oh. No way. Um, and then a loud, a loud slam sound hits, like something extremely heavy just dropped behind you. Run! Oh, Christ. Nice. Glance over your shoulder and you see what looks to be a fairly rounded boulder. Ah! I dispel uh, Alter Self immediately. Okay. So I have longer ass. Well, Alter Self is, is, is gone if you're casting Stone Skin, because that, that's concentration spell. This oh, that. Well, that, that, but it only carries it for a few rounds. It's been a uh, longer time than that. Like, uh, it's been oh, 15 minutes. Oh, uh, time's yeah. passed. Time's right. passed. Never mind, I don't do shit. But, but yeah, don't worry about that. The, the stone boulders. <laughs> hit. Indiana Jones, motherfucker! <laughs> Picking up speed with the with the slow decline of this room. Okay. Um, all of you guys, what are you doing? Run! Run! <laughs> Run. You're bolting forward. Uh, uh, you're making. I cast fly on myself and fly. Okay. <laughs> you cast. Back, you're safe. You cast fly, pushing forward. Uh, you guys get a little get a little speed, but you notice the boulder has started to gather steam as it continues down, and the pathway you guys are running is going at a slighter, uh, a heavier and heavier decline oh, as you push oh. forward. I t- as, I'm, as I'm flying, I turn around with my ring, <clears throat> and I cast slow on the boulder. Okay. Yes. Um, go ahead and make a, uh, 
I should know that. Hmm. This is interesting. I don't. Let me see if, if slow would have a direct effect on uh, this build, uh, just because it's that's something that happens right now that I didn't consider. I love that. <coughs> um, unfortunately, it is not a creature, and it actually fa- it affects the physical metabolism and like muscle use of an individual. This is just a solid structure and object. That was such a as you, rele- as you release the spell, you see the air on it kind of poof and drift a little slower, and the boulder seems to stutter for a moment, but continues to push forward. Frustrated, I cast uh, Obelisk of that was, Iron. That was your action. Damn it! Um, <laughs> I would like to cast all my spells in succession for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I, I, I you are going full sprint? Yes. Okay, yes. so pushing forward, you all push forward. Tiberius, who has stopped and turned and cast a spell, is not at a full dash, so he trails behind. Boulder is currently gaining on Tiberius. Um, I Gandalf it. <laughs> so you turn around, you're, you're, you're continuing to fly forward. Um, so you guys just turn and push forward. Tiberius, the boulder is nearly upon you now. What are you going to do? Oh, awesome. Uh, is it at least like uh, 10, 15 feet away from me? It is about 10 to 5 feet away from you. You can oh. see it kind of cresting. That's really fast. Sweet. Uh, as I'm now frustrated, I cast a fifth level spell and I will cast my Obelisk of Iron. Three in a row. Okay. Behind me. So, Get through that. All right, you bring that spell. All of a sudden, the, the room behind you, out of the stone, pockets of iron ore or whatever material is beneath the earth behind you is brought together into a liquid mass and then shoots up in the center of the hallway behind you with each one of these pillars slamming into the wall. You guys hear these three multiple explosions behind you and for a brief second, you fear the worst for Tiberius' current status. Um, immediately following that, you hear a large <clears throat> the impact of stone against iron and you see the obelisk bend with this horrible creaking sound. It's, Keep running. So, um, oh, that's some stuff right there. I don't know. The sound of the rolling has stopped. It's so untrusted. We should still get out of this hole. I that keep going. Could, mm. could give way at any moment. Let's walk. Shall we walk? I think we should walk. That's why I like to walk. Yeah, let's walk. Okay. You guys continue moving forward. The the decline getting a little a little more difficult to traverse as you feel yourselves now, kind of having to field your arms across the wall or use it for balance to make sure you don't just fall. Also, the air moist, the moisture in the air begins to grow more and more thick. There's almost a, a, some source of liquid at some point in, down the future has kind of permeated what was originally dusty, dry air with liquid of some kind, and the air itself grows more and more uh, rancid in scent. It smells like refuse or rot. It's hard to describe, and it's old, it's musky, it's terrible, and it grows stronger the further you go. As you continue pushing forward, you also feel that the dusty ground is becoming more and more mud-like. Mm. Is it making my hair poof out and look stupid? A little bit, yeah. You spent, you spent all morning like, I never did you well in yeah. humid climates. You did. This is why I lived in the mountains. <laughs> Is there any light? Any light source? Just, the, just, just this. We're not. There's no <laughs> natural light. We're not walking towards any type of light. <coughs> it's just the tunnel into darkness right now. Does there appear to be any type of plant life? Uh, from what you can tell, there is no plant life at all whatsoever. Okay. There is just uh, the moist, the moisture gathered on the walls. You can now see are dripping, and there is a uh, uh, the condensation has given this tunnel more of a uh, uh, mineral pocketed look, and the ground itself is getting more sludgy with each step. And it, uh, I want to make a. I'm sorry, you're not no, done. No, go, oh. Go ahead, go I, ahead. I was just gonna ask, are, is the, are the walls like like stone or just like like chiseled out rock? It feels like there, it's chiseled out hard earth that has been packed and supported with either uh, small wooden things that, like, that have been set to, to make sure that it doesn't collapse at some point in time, but a lot of that has either fallen through okay. uh, or has been... Uh, so it could collapse at any time. If you do any severe damage to its structure, it'd probably be a bad idea. Right, like. Drop a boulder. It's not a mine shaft. I drop a boulder, Terra. Boy. Nice. What were you going to say? I would like to make a. uh, You tell me what check it is. What I want to do is look to see. I want to look down into this thick mud kind of stuff. What I'm looking for are are tracks. And if I do well enough, I want to see if I can get a sense of like how fast the thing was going. Like, has it slowed down because it's comfortable, or is it still running because it wants to get to it? Okay. Make another survival check. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm underground. Mm-hmm. Um, Actually, and as a dwarf, I give you advantage on that. So roll again. Oh, okay. That makes sense. This, this is your 
This is your place. It's a well, the higher one was a four. <laughs> okay. The lower one was a one. The higher one was a four? <laughs> Remember what I told you about the Wheaton Dice Curse? It's... I'm sorry, I just, because no one will believe me. <laughs> No one ever believes me. Yeah, he's this been taking pictures of all the Genuinely, so wow. it's. So and at mean, this point, I'd be amazed that he hasn't helped us in any way, shape, or form. And cast a perception check of my own? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So let's see, we are at. Uh, 21. 21, okay. <laughs> First thing, first thing you are, is, you are useless for the love of God. <laughs> as a, a pre-existing member of the Slayers Taken, the man who is currently set to be the leader of your group, you're really beginning to wonder if this guild is kind of thing you really want to be joining at this point. <laughs> um, I haven't been in a fight yet. Right? True. God forbid. <laughs> um, but looking down, you can see there are no tracks, actually. This lime has not been traversed in quite some time, and the uh, the smoothness of it says that whatever came through here Sorry. Uh, didn't leave any footprints. At all. No. Um, oh. Also, as you guys continue, you reach a point where, especially with your heavy armor, let me go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, no. You got this. 10. So wait. Uh, 13. 13? My yeah. bad. Okay. Right. Yep, that was right. Yeah. Okay, you, uh, you're you stepping forward, keeping an eye out, and you kind of look back at the group and take a step, and your foot shh, slips out from under you. Smack! You hit the slime and <laughs> beginning to slide down the tunnel as part of the decline. You guys watch as your cleric just swoosh, and Goonie style slide vanishes into the darkness. Oh, it's our time. It's our time down here. <laughs> <laughs> Shaw has vanished into the darkness, and you hear, uh, as, uh, as I see this happen, I run over and I'm like, this looks like a lot of fun! As it runs through the air, because you're flying still. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I still, has 10 minutes passed? Ten minutes, ten minutes, it only lasts for like 10 minutes. Oh, then yeah, it's yeah, okay, right. it's yeah, so, yeah. The ten, so you just slide after? Yeah, I go, I go, this looks a lot of fun, and I go on a slide. Tiberius slides it's after, nice. body, body first. And then the I slime. see Tiberius go, and I go, <laughs> and I go too. All right. Three of your party has just vanished into the darkness, hoping that fate will take them to some place of pillows and feathers. <laughs> I think I'd rather walk as long as I can. I think I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys both make dexterity saving throws. Uh. 16. Oh. 16. Oh! Wow. You managed to digits. slowly make your way down this tunnel. My dex was 18, by the way. What's up? My dex was 18, by the way. I don't know if I made it. It doesn't matter. You, were, you jumped into it. You slide oh, perfectly. Cool. You intentionally. I can't even failed. hear you anymore. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You're miles um, away. You guys slowly begin to make your way down the tunnel as you can't even hear them anymore. You guys, one after another, sliding down the slime and grime going past you. You smell in the air uh, what sounds like vegetable matter that's been long, long falling in compost, along with what smells like rancid feces mixed with with uh, mold. It's just this terrible, continuously growing scent. I put my nose gets. <laughs> <laughs> um, until eventually, out of the, out of the darkness, because um, you're ahead of everyone, you're outside of the range of his light spell, the slime stops and there's just air. Hey, you guys! <laughs> <laughs> moments of this air rushing past oh, you shit. is immediately stopped with a wet <laughs> sound as you impact hard into some sort of heavy, spongy matter. Um, thankfully, because it's spongy, you only suffer uh, four points of damage, so you mark that somewhere on a sheet, uh, mainly just from the way you land in your armor, like it kind of just sticks into your, you know, where the plates are and just the impact was, was bad for your body, but you're now in darkness looking up sitting on what feels like you're on some sort of strange compost heap. Looking up, you see in the darkness this small light begin to appear. Oh, no. And you see this oh. dragonborn. I'm laughing, by the way. <laughs> can I try to move since I hear him laughing? Can I try to get out of the way? Okay. You roll out of the way as okay. the two of you scream down. <laughs> and with the light that now shines, you can see this is a cylindrical cistern of some kind. Like it is a, a tunnel that is very tall, and you both <laughs> impact into this same heap. <laughs> Shitter's full! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, nice. As we land, yeah. I, I uh, look around. I'm like, oh, that was a lot of fun. I cast, awesome. I cast press and digitation three times in a row and clean us all up. <laughs> you try and clean what you can, but you guys are like knee to nearly waist deep as you get up and move around. Or at least our faces. Your faces are clean. What a this, wonderful smell you've discovered. <laughs> and this I don't is, know why it's, they call it's a hobby terrible hobby smell. This, this room is quite honestly a mixture of long rotting food, uh, of dried, dried vegetation that has been discarded here for whatever reason. A lot of it's like, Hay and thatch that has been just rotting and molding for God knows how many years, and and quite honestly, uh, in feces from some indeterminate entity. Mm. I, I go ahead and I, a little from my I use my druid craft to take out some some of my sage and to kind of light it and kind of that won't do it. Spread yeah. some of my like, sage. Mm, it thank you. It's, 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 you're making it worse. <coughs> you're making it worse. Now it's smoking. Now it and smells, we, and I smoke, I smoke in my stuff. eyes, and I just cut press it out. Right. out of my face. Okay. As, 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 as you guys are doing this, you guys are making your way down the tunnel, and you, you have a ways to catch up to them. You do hear. We do. You hear this, and as you look around with the light, you can see little bits of movement, kind of leaping through this heap. Uh, insects, root, vermin, rat or whatever rats. else is going to be wonderful. Then suddenly, <laughs> thrusting out of the center of this heap, you see what looks like a large arm or tendril, kind of br- brownish tan in colors, <laughs> slams onto the, the, the side of it. A second one. Oh shit. I go invisible. All right. You've you got to help. Where the hell did he go? <laughs> <laughs> at which point you now see emerging from it uh, the, the two of these giant tendrils, which they end are covered in these long, teeth-like spines, kind of oh. grasping the sides of this, this stone cylinder, pulling itself out of the refuge, shaking as it pulls itself forward. You now see the body that contains it with one third central tendril that rises up with what looks like creepy eyes or nose holes that are kind of looking around and glancing at both of you. And you see merging beneath that the body, this large eight to 10 foot thick wide, uh, covered in just slime, uh, body that is this gargantuan, toothy maw that opens up with a tongue that lolls out. <laughs> and that's where we're going to go ahead and end today's oh. session. Damn it! Oh. <coughs> we pick up next week, uh, right where we left off. Uh, you guys slowly making your way down the tunnel. We'll pick up on that next time. Uh-huh. Uh, so toothy yeah. maw is where we end it. Toothy yep. maw! Tentacly brown, twitchy eyeball, toothy yep. maw. Yeah. That's all we know? That's all you know. Nuts. And some sort of strange sound and other small things. Do you give out prizes for the most ones rolled in a night? Because I'm pretty <laughs> sure I won that. I do, I do. And for that prize, I give you a fancy yellow D20. Oh! 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 That, thank you! That's that's great! Uh, I Does it have all ones on it? Uh, shit. Yeah. Oh, that's been your problem the whole time. Congratulations, you've won imploding self-esteem. <laughs> that's stacks, right? Because I already have I, I mean, it would be silly if I couldn't, like, I, I, could, I can, is that an ongoing, or? Because <laughs> that, that's a feat I took when I started. Yeah, yeah, I tried to tell you not to take that, but you know, character flavor is important. Uh, listen, it's a class feature. <laughs> It's an actor's class feature. After enough time, you can suck people into it. <laughs> well, uh, well, guys, uh, thank you so much. That, I think that was, that was, that was amazing. That was a fun, yeah. a fun that was first round. This is awesome. Got one more session with you guys. Yes, so what did you think fun. of your first game? It was incredible. Nothing should be this fun. Seriously, it was so much fun. It's kind of yeah. ridiculous. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you. I'm so glad you can join us, and I'm excited for next week. Heck yeah. yeah. Um, and, and thank you guys for tuning in. I uh, hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. Um, we're, we can't stay too long, unfortunately. I have a flight to catch very soon to fly out of that convention in Columbus, Ohio. Um, Zach, I think yep. it's around here with whatever we got to business. We got to get done with all you awesome people. Uh, thank yous and 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 all you just. Want to save gifts for next week? We'll, have, we'll save gifts for next week, but we're not quite in such a huge rush. So for those of you who sent stuff, we'll get to those next week. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so for people who donated, by the way, once again, donated to 826LA, which is our charity, um, which is a fantastic charity that, that takes young children and young adults and teaches them creative writing and writing skills, and uh, they do wonderful work. And uh, you guys have been fantastic, and, and, and donations you know, help uh, go to help that, that charity. Let's see, we got here. Start 813. 813, all right. Uh, Lon Solo. Donate twenty-five dollars. Thank you so much, Lon. Thank you. Uh, nice. The send from Grace. Donate twenty-five dollars. Thank you so much. The send. Uh, gelatinous dude. Oh, 
<laughs> Gillette is here. Donated $20, thank you so much, it's amazing. Uh, Undim one, donated $31, thank you so much, Undim. Uh, Wheelie Fact Toys donated fifty dollars. Wow, amazing Wheelie! Really? Wow. Once again, good to see you. That's amazing. You keep donating. I really appreciate that. Uh, Daffid did. Oh, Daffid the Darganzing. There might be more. Dot 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 dot. Yeah. The, the, take the ellipses. It makes it sound cool. Uh, donated a hundred dollars. <laughs> wow, Thank you so much. Really That's cool. An incredible yeah, donation. Uh, Escher Bacon donated twenty-five dollars. Thank you so much, Escher Bacon. Ooh, bacon. Uh, Moonsault 37 donated twenty dollars. Thank you, Moonsault. That's incredible. Uh, Nork Elad donated uh, seventy five dollars. Thank you, Nork Elad. Uh, Mark in the Park donated fifty dollars. Thank you, Mark. That's amazing. Freelander twenty donated fifteen dollars. That's incredible. JD JDI thirty five donated twenty five dollars. You're amazing. Uh, Miss uh, Miss Beezus donated twenty five dollars. Miss Beezus, that's amazing. Our uh, uh Shepherd Son donated fifty dollars. Shepherd Son. Thank you so much, Shepard Sun. Uh, turtle, Elite Turtle, uh, donated $50. Let's get these speech threes. Uh, thank you so much. T t t three, or three? Uh, <laughs> William Tua, TW, donated $25. Thank you, William. Uh, Salazar Jack donated $82.60. Keep him with the 826 theme. That's Thanks, fantastic. Salazar Jack. Clever. Night Raver 01, uh, donated $100. Thank you, Night Raver. Keep raving. Uh, MZV5005 donated $20. Thank you so much, MZV5005. That's incredible. Okay, got a flight to catch. Got a flight. RPG donated $43.21 to sending numbers. I like it. Thank you so much. Uh, Nausicaa451 donated $10. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Killer Penguin donated $25. Thank you, Killer Penguin. Damien O'Pyro donated $30. Thank you, Pyro. Uh, Brian can't log into Twitch. I'm sorry, Brian. That's that's pretty rough. Um, <laughs> made thirty dollars. That, that's, that's fantastic. Nice. Gator Kane donated hundred dollars. Thank you, Gator Kane. He's got a nice texture to that Kane. Mm -hmm. uh, Magnus Rogar donated forty dollars. Oh, no. Kill things, Tiberius. Get it done. Uh, Foxy Forest I donated six dollars and thirty nine cents. Thank you, Foxy. Aether Rex donated fifty dollars. Thank you so much, Aether Rex. Monos twenty uh, donated twenty dollars. Thank you so much, Uncle Annie donated fifteen dollars. Appreciated, Gar Gar. A gargantran one. I'm my eyes aren't working, but that's your new name. Uh, donated fifty dollars. <laughs> Thank you so much. PFW Scott donated twelve dollars. Thank you. Jargamund donated a hundred dollars. It's incredible. Uh, Joker three nine six donated fifty five dollars fifty five cents. Thank you so much. For all your donations. Yeah, all, all this is, uh, and, and yeah, again, thank you, Blake, the, and, and for doing this because uh, you know, portions of this goes to uh, an amazing charity, and we love all the people at 826. We're, we're going to be doing so, a uh, video very you so soon much. Uh, going to 826 and telling you guys all about it, yeah. but yes, they're a great charity. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. Them the, 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 the hefty amount that you guys have contributed over this time towards their charity, it's, it's fascinating. It's you guys incredible. have incredible fans. It's amazing. I mean, this whole week leading up to this on Twitter and everything, you guys have amazing fans. Yeah. Sorry about the DDoS the attack. The fan Sorry what? Sorry about the DDoS attack. That was, <laughs> that's how we say hi. <laughs> no, <Nice. laughs> no, seriously, it's amazing. Like don't, Sorry. Don't mention, Sorry. The, yeah, don't yeah. mention those things. Yeah. Yeah. It's more of a yeah. hug. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Gentle hug. Uh, thank you everybody for helping us get to 6K. They've already started a stupid email chain talking about what musical songs they're gonna sing. That's yep. amazing. Uh, <laughs> oh, and guys, Mary Elizabeth came back to visit. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so hello. she did return. Is that, is that a special guest? I just gave a troll. Steve Bloom, everybody. Star Scream himself is here. Yeah. Oh, stop it. Yes. yes. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Right. Right. Awesome. 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 Please give it up. Thank you so much for coming and watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Um, so great. Yeah, it's an incredible time. Looking forward to the to the session next week. Are there any other closing comments you guys want to bust out tonight before we? Uh... I don't want to it was really fun and really weird to be on this side of that screen. <laughs> so, so odd for me, and just to play a character who's so different from what the character from the characters I used to play before I DM'd all the time. Right, right. It's weird to be a guy who just doesn't think about stuff and, and like, is not particularly charismatic and uh, 
Um, anyway, people who are, are have thought about playing or want to, to play RPGs, uh, when we were rolling up this guy, I was so excited when I got like, what did I roll for? Like, anyway, he's got a minus one. I rolled and I rolled an eight for his charisma. Yeah. And I was oh, so yeah. excited because <laughs> I was like, well, now I know exactly who this guy is. Yep. I know exactly who he is, yeah. and and it's going to be really fun to be him. And yeah, it was really awesome. great. It was really fun to come and. Uh, um, uh, I, I found out about your game because Liam directed me in a uh, in a voice session. And I oh yeah. Like, I want to oh. go play on your show so much. <laughs> well, so now it is done. Dreams do come true. They do. And then we smash them. <laughs> now roll a one and get us out of here. <laughs> that, that the, I'll try, but it's, since it's not going to count, I don't know. Yeah, 20. 19. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so see you next week, 7 p.m. on the Twitch stream. Have a wonderful week. Bye. <laughs>